The comments are already here. Um, hey, everybody. Oh, man. <laughs> Welcome. As they, as they come in. Here, I'll start throwing okay. some comments up on the... Uh, while we wait for Tom to come in, I can't see Tom. Craig says, "What are, are we lineup?" Keep Grayson and Allison. Yeah, we'll keep them in. Um, okay, what cool. a lineup! If I can stay awake, this one is a must-watch. But being in the UK, I'm sure I'm. I'll be in uh, Naughty Land. Is that Naughty Land means sleep? Not off. It's like nodding no, off. Naughty sleep. Oh, not like I'm yeah. nodding off. Okay. Here, I got an idea, so I don't have to hold this phone the whole time. Mm -hmm. I brought out. Aunt May. Okay. There. Oh, yeah. Those boxes are great. So the box holds. This is really going right next. <laughs> Stryker says he's first. Uh, Fabio says good night. <laughs> Adam says also, excited. The focus calling me on myself. Oh, okay. Hello. Your volume is very low. <laughs> I can't hear you. Excited because I can't I actually. It might be a blessing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Matt says, hello, Tom, Ron, and Sal. Uh, when hello. you create spider do you have <laughs> Are you on the bar? What, what the browser are you using, Tom? <laughs> You're not even. <laughs> <laughs> why, don't, why don't we hold Matt's question? Yeah, yeah, I agree. actually start. <laughs> Tom says he's on AOL <laughs> and he's backstage, but he can't get his mic working or anything. Did he? Uh, did he? Click allow microphone and camera access on his. Okay, desktop. Brad. Are, are you hearing any of this, Tom? Okay. Did you click any of that? <laughs> click on what? Oh no, we're we're trying to do tech support with uh, Defalco now. Oh, I see. We got someone okay. from Rio well, de Janeiro Brad, watching. Brad, Brad, right, Neil. Brad is having exactly the same problem Sal had. Okay. His browser is blocking. Do you, the, Ron, Do you have Google Chrome as a browser option? Neil. Okay. Now everybody is silent. Oh yeah, we're 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 trying to talk, Tom. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. We're we, should have, we should have all. We should have started all of this at four o'clock in the afternoon. I think so. Okay. <laughs> Um, we got someone from Brazil that says hi. Huge Spider Girl fan. Oh my oh no. I'm from Brazil right now. Wow. We got hello from Rio de Janeiro says hello. Fantastic. Hi. Because <laughs> Sal's having the same problem. We tried, to, we tried to get Sal booked Hello up. from Italy. Is it okay if I say mm -hmm. hi to people? Yes, they can hear you. You're right up next to my microphone, oh, Sal. Fantastic. That's wonderful. Yep. Well, thank you very much for tuning in, folks. And, uh, We'll see you next time. <laughs> You're calling it already, Sal? What's going on? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Benjamin says, I hope uh, the barbershop's open soon. Friends needs a haircut. If you could download Google Chrome and then punch in the, uh, the website that Brad sent us, that's what I did earlier today, and it's made me look like a genius. <laughs> yeah. You're completely, you're completely destroying my illusion, though, because Troy can not be on a cell phone. <laughs> hey, one and a half out of three ain't bad. <laughs> yeah, down, download Google Chrome, and then hey, Andrew in, Rosen in the says, uh, Yep, Andrew says hello. Hello, Andrew. How are hey. you? Andrew says Ron is wearing Thor's hat. He is indeed Spider Menace. Our buddy Joe says, "Hey, everyone." Uh, Spider Boy from the UK says hello. Jeff okay. over in Philadelphia. Hey, Jeff, how are you? All right, you're going to try it through Google Chrome? Okay. Okay. Um, I might jump out so I can A, reset my router, oh, no. and B, have Neil come in and help help do IT shoot. Okay. Google Chrome. For Tom and Sal, because he, he can help. Write down, okay. But write down the uh, the link he sent us in the email. So, and then when you get to Google Chrome, right. I'm to Google Chrome, and you should end right. up. Does Neil have the the link, Kelly? I'm sending it to him now. Okay. Matthew, yes, DeFalco will be on soon. We're trying yes. to support with them. How are you, Matthew? And uh, loving all the cosplayers, the Spider Girls, and Thor and Kingpin. Yes, that's all of us. <laughs> 
Thank you. All right. So I'm if you just go I'm going to jump out so Neil can jump okay. in, okay? That's cool. You don't have to jump out. Oh, you're going to reset your router. Okay. You should be able to get to a download. David says hi from Scotland. Yeah, just go to where you where you not Jeff I will be Tell Busema is a national treasure. Right, I'll be right back. Oh my god. Is Neil in? <laughs> this man needs help. <laughs> All right, tech okay. support guy Neil. Well, thank you, Hi. All right, it's it's tech support man. It's tech it's guy Neil work. here. That that might work. Yeah, maybe yep. yeah, try another. Okay, one. let's see. Okay, so what am I <laughs> looking? At? Okay, so Sal has um, he has Chrome on his iPad now. Yes. Uh, I don't know, Sal. Do you have Chrome on your uh, iPad? It didn't seem to be successfully uh, downloading. No. Yeah. I don't even know what Chrome is. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. All right. I'm kicking <laughs> out for a little okay. bit. You're, so no, you your router. Oh, that's gone. Okay. Yeah. There was an icon there that I was going to tap onto, but it yeah. went away. Jim Salicrop says hello. Jim, how are you? It says, Sal, you sound like Stan Lee over the phone. <laughs> I do. Uh, poor Stan, boy, he is certainly missed, didn't he? No doubt. I was going to tell you guys when we started the show that back in 2009, that's that was the last time I had all three of you together on the phone. Really? Yeah. 2009. And also, I was uh, 14. Sal, <laughs> Sal, over the summer, I bought this and read it. I read your the book that you were profiled in, and and you mentioned the, that that podcast that we did, which where we celebrated your 40th anniversary. I thought that was awesome that you mentioned that in the book. Oh, fantastic. That, I hope uh, you were able to stay awake while you were reading. <laughs> I did. Uh, it says, Sal, Italy and the Sicilian fans love you. It says, Oh, my gosh. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Thank you, Sicilian fans, wherever okay. you are. Oh, you're in Sicily. Where do you uh, Bruce says, Chrome is on Ron's head. <laughs> 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 uh, like to me. Looks like aluminum. Benjamin says that's a great book. Jim says uh, I'm great, Sal. Say Excelsior. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, add to stream, tech support guy. Okay, what are we doing, Neil? Okay, so Mr. Bushema, um, uh, you're on your iPad, yes? Yes, he is. Okay, so. If he's in the app store, he'll find Google Chrome if he if he searches for it. And that'll be the first step. Okay. I'm not sure. You have an app store, Tom? I'm not sure if the apps if he knows how to get to the app store, Neil. Oh god. Okay. Um <laughs> there's a reason I have this gif up of, of Ryan Gosling yeah, just like we have a lot of chrome on our bumpers. Uh, oh, that's so funny. His wife says they have chrome on the bumpers of the car. <laughs> I love it. I don't think they're doing that anymore. That's awesome. I I think it, I think we're we're okay. Well, once we can get Tom on the line, okay, we'll start. Tom is trying through other browsers. Okay, cool. We've got sixty-five people currently watching. That's kind of cool. Gosh. Those, those those are good numbers. Wow. Well, they're, they're in the comment section. They're watching us on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, Doug says you guys are the best. It, Matt says it's great to hear Sal's voice. Uh, yeah. Andrew Tell says my wife that. <laughs> Simma, Sal's voice is awesome. <laughs> uh, oh, 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 I thought I saw Tom. No, I didn't. Okay. Uh, Jim Salakrop is watching. Any other Marvel Comics alum in the audience? Uh, Andrew wants to know, do you have a petition? Uh, Sal, do you know the petition to get Spectacular Spider-Man collected with uh, J.M. D. Mateus? There's a petition. Oh, it, I, you know, I missed half of what you said. Oh, Dad, I'm sorry. And Andrew had a question, if you know about the petition online to get your Spectacular Spider-Man collected that you did with J.M. D. Mateus. Oh, no, no. I, I did, didn't know that. Yep. They, they're trying to get that collected for you. That'd be awesome. Oh, oh my gosh. Well, that's <laughs> overwhelmed. And Spider-Man The Child Within is a masterpiece, I would agree. Good gravy. <laughs> hey, Ron, it's Jason the Scarf Guy, whoever that is. 
He's local. He's local. Hey, Jason. Oh, we got Brett Breeding. Love that Ron, what Ron has done with his hair, but Tom and Sal don't look anything like I remember them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> SoFlo says this is Spider-Man royalty. He had some surgery done, yeah. Hey, Neil, I, I think we're, we're – Tom is uh, down – Y'all got to figure it out? No, but I think oh, once we get Tom on a Chrome browser, we'll get him in here. Okay. Andrew says, Sal, you signed my copy. So did Ron and Tom. There you go. Fantastic. Bruce says, I missed the beginning. Why are you holding the mail-away Aunt May figure? <laughs> I'm holding it because my cell phone is right here, and this is my microphone, so I don't have to hold the phone the whole time. And Sal's, Sal's in that little box on top of the box. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't hear a word you said, Ron, but I'm sure it was nasty. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, my goodness. Jico uh, says, Sal, the most energetic pages in the industry. Thanks for your work. Greetings from Brazil. Man, you got some big oh fans gosh. over in Brazil. Man, they're so kind. I, I, I'm overwhelmed. I really am, and I mean that sincerely. K-O-W-A, Sal, you create Gene DeWolf and the Wrecking Crew. Thank you, sir. Hey. Please, I want an interview with Busema for Italian Media, says Fil Filippo. Rob says, hi, guys. So glad to hear your voice, Sal. I've been following you since 1974. Bless you. Good grief. That's, that was uh, for a while. Four years old, I think, back in <laughs> Rob, what were you supposed to ask Sal? Oh, yeah, Rob, Rob, do you have a question for S Sal? He, he specifically wanted to hear Sal's voice do something specific. Oh. Rob? Rob wanted to. Here, I'll wait till it comes in. I think I know what Sal, I mean, Ron is <laughs> asking so, him to do. Kelly, I think Kelly, I'm talking to Kelly right now. She, I think she's coming back in. Okay. All right. Neil, thanks for your help. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I feel like I just came in here. I've done nothing. I haven't fixed anything. <laughs> I, said, right. hey, I, I said, hey, have you downloaded Chrome? What's Chrome? Oh, yeah, that's, all right. Thank you for your help. <laughs> <laughs> I asked the question. I did my part. Yes. You did your part, man. You could, thank you, Neil. All right. See you guys. Bye. Okay. Hold on. I can't do it, Rob. All right, I'll do it. Hey, Sal, uh, Rob wanted yeah. to know if you could sing some Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> I'd sooner cut my wrist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you were the best. Thank, thank you for the, uh, the request, but uh, no, my Fiddler days are over. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, here comes Kelly. Yes, great. Kelly. There you are. Okay. Hey, you're back. All right. <laughs> Adam says, is it wrong that I'm enjoying the tef technical difficulty theater? No, Adam. It's kind of entertaining. I am too. <laughs> uh, Fabio says, Sal, thanks for making my childhood very happy Aww. with the story of the Incredible Hulk drawn by you. There you go. Oh, you're very kind. Who was, who was that now? Fabio. 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 Fabio, you're... You're very kind, my friend. Thank you so much, and I was happy to contribute. I recently, Sal, read your Captain America run with uh, Inglehart on recently over the summer. I'd never read that. You did such a good job with that. Oh, my gosh. Well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I have to say this, and it's going to sound like bragging, but I'm, I'm, I'm really not. I'm very reluctant to do that. But uh, Captain America was never a big seller for... Marvel, mm -hmm. but when Steve and I teamed up to do it, yeah, the time that the, the run that we had on it, they sold more Captain America comic books than that they, they ever had. It, it was the best that uh, it ever did, as far as Marvel was concerned. Sal, I actually brought out this glass just for you. It's your cap, right on this oh, glass. Actually, well, Gil Kane and uh, thank you, mm -hmm. but nice try, Brad. It's not Sal's cup. No. Oh, uh, this whole time I've been thinking I've been drinking. No. I've thought I've been drinking out of a sal cup, man. Even though I'm laughing, I took no pleasure in saying. 
I got Tom in the backstage. It says device is not connected. I don't know. Okay. I've Tom. been saying that about the Falco for years. Aww. His devices aren't connected. His devices are not connected. Not properly. Uh, now, of, of, the, of, of the three of us, which ones were you hoping wouldn't be able to log on? Be honest, Brad. <laughs> Yeah, you know, put up. Who are you hoping wouldn't be able to get in here? Well, I tell you what, Ron. After that, that uh, hit on the cup, I'm probably me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, oh my gosh, look at these comments. I'm missing comments. It, Let's see here. I think Adam Munchels. Adam Munchels is great. Adam says, "Brad, told <laughs> my friends." I agree. <laughs> Uh, let's see. <laughs> KO says, next time we're on, come as Thunderstrike. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It happened. It happened. Uh, that's so funny. I like to keep you guessing. No <laughs> All right. Well, what? I don't have Tom's number, so I can't call him as easily as I have with Sal. Okay. Ron, you want to oh, call goodness. Tom and see what's the latest? I could try. Well, he did. Maybe he's celebrating his birthday and the day too. No, he was. He was. He was looking into uh, using another browser. Okay. But apparently, he's still trapped backstage. So okay. I'll see what I can find out. Here. Yeah, I can't add him if he doesn't have a camera or a mic. It says. Um, sometimes it might work if you ref like after you accept the permissions and then refresh. It might help. That's true. How much battery do I have on this thing? Oh, man. Uh, yeah. Hey, any luck? Have you have you followed the instruction to refresh? <laughs> okay, nice weather we're having. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jim wants to know, Sal, are you saying Spider-Girl would have sold better if Sting Steve Englehart wrote it? <laughs> is what Jim says. <laughs> Uh, I'm confused. <laughs> Do you have an answer of any kind? I um, have no idea. Anthony, Anthony says, Sal, I was uh, where, where you you go? Okay, you know, know, ROM and FF. Like, type in. Well, thank you, Anthony. I, I hope you enjoyed them. <laughs> Plug it in, Brad, is what he Yeah, said. so you your know, phone doesn't die. Know where there's well, a where you type in website to get a out of USB. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well just type into that what we'll type into that bar, download Google Chrome. What? Uh, Ron is I mean Ron is on the phone with Tom trying to get him connected. So forget it. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a shot at me, not you. <laughs> because I tried to get Sal on Google Chrome. Yeah. <laughs> Well, here's hope. Matt, Matt says he's watching us on three devices. Oh, well, oh, thanks, man. Matt. Thanks Anthony, for those three views. My childhood <laughs> wouldn't have been as much fun without Sal, is what Anthony said. Hey, thank you so much, Anthony. My childhood wouldn't have been much fun without me, too. <laughs> yeah. So phone and, then go, and then go to your email and write down that link that Brad sent us, okay? And then, then once you get oh, three, so here, let me mute. Let me mute Ron for a minute. Ron is on the phone with Tom, trying to get him to connect. Sal, there we go. Ah, uh, good. Yep. All right. I'm, there's, there's Ron back. Okay. You muted. Sure. I muted you because Sal was getting confused. He was hearing you give directions. <laughs> I'm uh, taking no blame for that. All right. <laughs> hey, thank you, Doug. I appreciate that comment. No doubt. And Andrew says, you guys are my favorite creators. Thank you so much for your creations and time spinning the craft. You guys are national treasures. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ron yeah. Alan Tom are treasures. Thank you. You're welcome, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. That's I, I know all about the bound, the bound Spider Girl, and we got the hat off and everything. It was wonderful. Uh -huh. There you go. Wonderful to meet you. At, well, actually, I didn't meet you. You had a friend bring the big bound thing, so everybody. Oh. Wow. 
Doug says, thank you, Sal. You and your brother's art were big parts of my younger days. Thank you so much, sir. That's nice. Amen. <laughs> thank you so much, Doug. We appreciate that. John was uh, was a great artist. Yep. A truly talented man. He should have been painting pictures for galleries and museums. Brett Breeding says, a sure sign of the ap apocalypse. Ron Friends is the only one not having tech issues. <laughs> 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 oh, hold on, Ron. Let me let me full screen you. Let me see. The <laughs> <There you go. laughs> Turn it off, Ron. Oh man. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's funny. Hey, can I take about uh, five seconds to to grab something to drink? Here? Oh yeah, yeah. Feel yes. free. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm drinking yeah. some orange soda. I I think you need to go for something stronger after this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like weed, maybe. Weed? Am I... <laughs> Does anybody have any questions for the guy that actually showed up? Right? <laughs> yeah, Dude, I'll just... I mean, I can just go into my questions at this point. Yeah, let's... Uh, Sal, if, if, you know, once Sal gets back with his uh, booze, his he'll be able to hear it. <laughs> uh, also may show up at any moment. We yeah, let's hey. have some questions for uh, Ron. Odin son. Yeah. Go ahead, Cal. Any Spider-Girl questions right. you have, I'm Okay, here. so... I just just because it, I kind of didn't want it in the original interview anyway because it's kind of nitpicky. But right. Allison and I have discussed this on the height charts. So a lot of the stats either showed her as five five, uh, maybe as five five or five seven, okay. and I don't know where the disconnect happened and what height is she? Like, I actually saw her as being of average height and and shorter than some of the other girls on the team because she didn't know that she had, uh, you know, she had hang time because her powers were latent. Mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. So I never saw her as, a, as tall and lanky, even though I drew her way too skinny after I came on after Pat. But uh, I would say she's probably uh, whatever average height would be for for her age. I mean, for, for a 15 year old teenage girl, I'm, I'm five, 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 six, you know, it's all in the same two inches. Who's going to notice? You know, but I, I mean, I, the, the fact that, you know, I, yeah, I, you know, Pete was always five ten mm -hmm. uh, in my mind. So uh, that was from the old original handbook and everything. So that's very, uh, he was like five ten and one sixty five. And, mm -hmm. You know, it, when I, uh, after Pat had been off the book for a while, when we launched Amazing, I, I kind of went back to my original idea for uh, May Day, which was build-wise, she was built very much like a gymnast, especially yeah. after she had been Spider-Girl for a while. And she, she had uh, you know, more powerful shoulders and thighs and, uh, you know, was built a little more compact. So I never saw her as being really tall and thin. Tom DeFalco. There you go. Hey. 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 I'm gonna yes. mute. I'm gonna mute Tom in just a minute after he does that. Okay. Uh, okay. Hi. Tom, Hi. You're, there you are. We got Tom. There we Hi. go. <laughs> what happened to Sal? Sal on my door. cell phone right here. <laughs> on the phone. Well, hello, everybody. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Tom. Thanks for joining us. I'm sorry there was so. Tech, tech problems getting it in you here, but I'm glad you're here. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it's I, the, think it, I think it's Tom. Turn down your radio. Turn down my radio. How's that? That's better. That's better. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sal, can you hear Tom? I sat next to her just now, and she turned it off. And okay, Sal, so you want to say hi to Tom? 
I thought I said hi to Tom and told him he looked so terrible. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, have you met Grace and Alice? And yeah. Kelly? Yeah. Yes. Say hello. <laughs> What the heck is? We got feedback now on Tom's end. Give me a, give me a minute. Um, yeah. So Tom, I would close any all the browsers except the Streamyard one. I can. All right. Let me see if I. Joan just asked me, "Who is that?" And she pointed to you. From Asgard. Uh, she said, "Who is that?" <laughs> that's Odin's son, friends. Is that that's who that is? <laughs> right, you're looking old. She bought into that whole. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. That's nice. That's good. Uh, Tom says my expressions are priceless. Well, thank you, Tom. Why? <laughs> um, all right. I all think right. we're ready to start. Are you guys ready? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Getting ready to end. We haven't even started yet. Oh, that's funny. Come on, it's past his bedtime. Past his bedtime. Oh man, that's. I mean. All right. Let's. I'm gonna keep. Uh... <laughs> wow. That was interesting, wasn't it? It was great. All right. We'll we'll start in three, two. Hey, crawl spacers! Welcome to a special episode of Crawl Space. We've got. Uh, Spider Girl's creators him, herself or himself. What I'm, I'm, I'm confused. Wow. Brad. What, what Brad. an awful Brad. intro on my end. Anyway, we've got Ron Friends dressed as Thor. What's going on, Ron? Hey, was well met, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> we've got Tom uh, DeFalco dressed as Tom DeFalco. What's going on, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> This is how I normally dress. Okay, good. <laughs> and we've we've got Kelly. What's going on, Kelly? Dressed as Mayday. Hi. If I don't laugh, I'll cry at this point. So oh. hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Sal Buscema on my on the phone right here, propped up with an Aunt May box. <laughs> I've got my phone right here on the top, right next to my microphone. So hi, say hi, Sal. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck is an Aunt May box? Well, this uh, is the doll. Hold on, this, this is an Aunt, Aunt, Aunt May doll. Figure. Look, Aunt May. There she is. You've got to be kidding. Amazing. Yeah, an Aunt May action figure. <laughs> I didn't think Aunt May got any action, but she did in this figure. I <laughs> anyway, there you go. We also have Grace dressed in the black suit Spider Man. Yes. Hey, Grace. Oh, man. <laughs> Girl. And we have, yeah, and we have Allison up there in the clone it, of right. It, no, this is her original yeah. creation. Yeah. Original it, creation. It's not awesome. April. It's purple. Oh, it's purple, yeah. May. There you go. All purple. I love the purple. Very nice. A purple outfit. Thank you. Is that a legit costume, really? Yeah, she's wearing it. It's legit, Sal. She, she made a. She made her recolor. Because she does uh, fan art. Mm -hmm. Spider Man had a purple outfit. There you go. And Al Allison just had a baby. How many days yes. ago, Allison? Congratulations, Allison. Uh, Congratulations. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, and she put on spandex. Two weeks ago, had a baby and put on spandex. That's incredible. That's it. <laughs> that is fantastic. You're. Uh, you're truly Spider Girl. <laughs> <laughs> the real hero. The real hero giving birth. None of us fell I, into it. You're truly Spider Girl. It's like, did Sal ever read the book? <laughs> so I mean, um, it's, it's been it's been a decade since you know. Yeah. And yet she's it's still like a decade. And yet she's still sixteen. Isn't that there you go. <laughs> So uh, Kelly is our newest member of the crawl space. And uh, when I met her, she is the biggest spider girl fan I've ever met. I mean, just and a little bit, not, yeah. not a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> I 
and uh, talk a bit about Kelly, how you were introduced to Spider Girl. Talk about your origin story. Uh, my dad used to take me to the comic book shop every weekend, and it was probably it was right after my eighth birthday, so it was sometime in 1998. I want to say it was a, the third issue. I think that's what we determined uh, one time, but it was just on the wall, and mm -hmm. I saw. I think it was like the Fantastic Four. Five. It was Fantastic Five. five. Yeah, yeah, but eight-year-old brain uh, was. You know, I saw all the characters and a girl dressed as Spider-Man. And we got all the back issues and all that because I was just so excited. And it was like my birthday present. And she was sporty like me. She had brown hair like me when like a lot of comics at the time were very blonde and redheaded. So I identified immediately and it, I just kept collecting. And I went from what was the original run. I basically was eight to 19. So I read it wow. religiously my entire childhood. That's awesome. So <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> I have a very sweet story. And thank you, Kelly. Uh, my sons who are in college, thank you. And <laughs> your son's in college, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We we helped put somebody through college by buying yeah. Spider Girl. <laughs> so, Tom and Ron and Sal, talk a bit about the long at lasting aspects of this character. We're we're coming up on twenty years, or if not farther, of Spider Girl's longevity. Tom, why don't you talk a little bit about? Did you think we'd still be talking about Spider Girl in twenty twenty? Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> um, I I. Uh... Spider Girl was supposed to just be a, a one issue story in, in, a, in an issue of What If. Yeah. Um, and um, I, I always remember that as we were finishing the, the, the first issue, what, what became the first issue, Ron said to me, You know, this is a pretty fun character. Do you think we can do, ever do a sequel? And I, I remember saying to, to him, uh, gee, I don't know, Ron, this is a what-if story. There haven't been that many sequels. You know, maybe in a year or two, maybe, maybe we could go back to this universe. But, you know, we'll, we'll have to see how things feel a, a year from now. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I thought it was just going to be a one-shot story. If I may, though. Yeah. Tom was the regular writer on What If at the time. Hmm. And uh, so this was one of the stories he wanted to do. He was nice enough to invite me along. Um, but the one thing that we did a little different for what ifs, and Tom, Tom did it probably for all his what ifs, is it was easy for us, having been on Spider-Man together, to kind of say, this is, this is kind of fun. Let's pretend that the book ended when we left back in <laughs> And this is a new, you know, we're going to get all the, the old band back together. We're going to get all the actors back together and check in with these guys now after all these years. And we did make a lot of decisions based on serious concerns, like supporting characters that had legs that could contribute their own backstories. And, uh, you know, the whole take on, on May Day was as a, a, a well-drawn character in that, she was friends with the, the, the geeks, and she was friends with the jocks, and uh, she was always torn between those two groups. And as she discovers her powers and discovers a, a way to bring her physicality and her uh, mental acuity together, intelligence together, this is a new discovery for her. And this, this, she finally feels whole, like she doesn't have to deny one half of her uh, as Spider-Girl. And all, no, all of those things are not always on the table in a what if story. Peter Gillis wrote some fantastic what if stories back in the day. I was fortunate enough to draw one or two of them. But for the most part, especially in that second wave of what if stories, it was a lot of um, what if everything happened exactly the way it did in the 616, but everybody dies. Yeah, <laughs> that, that had become kind of the lazy what if story. You right. Know? Uh, let's do the Phoenix uh, saga, but everybody, but the but the universe gets destroyed. You know, let's 
let's do this Wolverine arc, but at the end, everybody blows up, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, we weren't interested in doing that. We were, you know, we weren't interested in having Spider-Man go out in the blaze of glory. We were very interested as fans of the character uh, uh, to uh, explore Pete as a father and that legacy aspect of it. I mean, people ask me all the time, why can't you just bring, in fact, Tassada occasionally would suggest, just bringing Mayday to the 616. Mm. If you just put Mayday to the 616, you're leaving behind the family aspect of the book, yeah. which is the heart of the book. I mean, the yeah. the, the legacy dynamic and the uh, the family dynamic are the heart of the, t uh, the title. So it, it wouldn't work to just have her, you know, as a 16-year-old get, yeah. get sent to the 616 and have to what, you know, get adopted by J. Jonah Jameson or something like that. <laughs> yeah. it, sounds, it sounds like I'm disparaging other female Spider-Man characters. That didn't no. Sorry. <laughs> well, that was actually I mean, somebody's I idea. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> I mean, I, I do, I, sorry, I do want to say to you though, like one of the reasons why I identified so hard is like my dad is now retired um, GBI. Uh, so I was so used a large part of like with Peter working with the uh, NYPD and, you know, kind of in the CSI and investigative stuff. And I was so used to being around that and having that dynamic with my own father, especially growing up that like that resonated with me and I identified with it. And it's without that, I don't know if I would have identified with Mayday huh. as hard as I did right. because there is that fi family dynamic. And Alice and Grace, can we just call it right now and say Kelly <laughs> is gay? <laughs> is that okay? Uh, uh, Jim, Jim Salakrop <laughs> just wrote in, Kelly, you look like Ron and Sal drew you. Exactly. Oh, thank you. <laughs> It's only, only much, much better. I mean, I, it, a lot of it's makeup. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Kelly, you kind of talked about what the character means to you. Why, you want to talk any more about why, what this character, I mean, this is, you fell in love instantly with this, this character. Yeah. I, well, I fell in love instantly because I identified with her. But the reason I kept being a fan is because of the stories and the world mm -hmm. building and the fact that felt genuine and it didn't feel forced and i know it's now i feel like old man yelling at cloud when i look at the newer <laughs> comics and things just don't feel as complete and at with yeah. any and a lot of times they don't have as much heart and it's really the stories because like i know i can read a story that i read at 10 years old today at 29 and i'll see something a little bit differently but it still means something and it still can teach a lesson. I've I've been reading Spider Girl with my five year old nephew. Um and I know we have a you know a few others um that are listening in that have started reading reading it to their kids. I'm one of the biggest proponents of when my fan uh, my friends have little kids, I'm constantly like pushing Spider Girl on them because I really feel like it it's got it's it's got lessons to to show without mm -hmm. being too preachy, yeah. and I uh, I enjoy Tom having Tom that in my life. What, Ron? Tom can be preachy. <laughs> Tom can be preachy, huh? Maybe that's just mostly to me, you know. But <laughs> well, you need you need more direct than most. I, I need people. more direct preaching than most. That's true. Hey, let me get Sal's opinion. Sal, why do you think this character resonates so much all these years later? Well, I think. You know, the Spider-Man persona has got to have something to do with it. Uh, having a female version of, of Spider-Man is uh, fantastic. And I, yeah. it's, it's really the only thing that I can think of. Yeah. But um, I don't do much speaking lately, so. <laughs> I, no, it sounds right. I, I don't think the book would have been the same or as successful if it didn't involve Pete and Mary Jane yeah. uh, it, mm. to the extent that it did, that it was about the family unit. Yeah. Because older fans were aching to grow up, to have Pete grow up with them, and it gave yeah. them that entree into a world that they were never going to see in the 616 right. of Pete as a parent. And the, 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 so the older fans could identify with it, and the younger fans, like Kelly, identified with May Day. Right. How, how cool would it be to have Spider-Man be your dad, you know? 
Uh, yeah. The way it was structured, because Tom's a genius, was that, <laughs> was that May Day finds out at the same time the reader does. And you get to experience it with May Day, finding out that, you know, my dad, who was just that guy who went off to work and made something called hotcakes, um, was Spider Man, was a superhero. You know, yeah. and, uh, there, there have been a couple of projects like that that have come up recently that. You know, we we were slightly ahead of the curve on some of that, I think. And uh, I, I think that's what clicked. I really do. I mean, we were definitely a success because of the love of Spider-Man that's out there. Sure. Yeah. It's a, legacy. A, a, a lot of a lot of older Spider-Man readers really objected to the fact that um, Peter didn't accept the idea of Mayday being a superhero right away. Hmm. Um, I'm a long time to you know, adjust to that concept. Yeah. But, but I kind of felt that that's how any f real father would be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, 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 yeah. But a lot of fans thought, hey, wait a minute. He was a superhero. He, sh he, sh he should be very happy that his daughter's, you know, going out and risking her neck. Yeah. Yeah. Or the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. As, yeah. as a father, there's a lot of things I did in my youth that I don't want my daughter to do either. So I, yeah. I totally get it, Tom. You hypocrite. Oh, I know yeah. exactly. I, I, I'm over here. Yeah. No, I'm over here. <laughs> you know, I, I've confessed this before that a lot of Spider Girl I actually stole from my from my brother and his and his daughter, my niece. Um, I, I stole whole conversations. Mm. Um, um, and I remember one time my my niece uh, was thinking about maybe becoming a cop. Now she was in high school at the time. Mm -hmm. and she said, you know, I think, Dad, when I grow up, I want to be a cop. And my brother was was beside himself with this concept that his daughter would put himself put herself into danger as a as a policewoman. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, pointed out to him that when he was, uh, you know, as, as soon as he became eighteen, he joined the army and went to Vietnam. And he said to me, "Well, the difference was I knew what I was doing. She's too young." <laughs> 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 and I, and I, at some point, I did steal those lines, which I yeah. stuck into a Spider Girl story because I think that, like, like you said, Brad. Yeah. You know, when we were young and stupid, we yeah. did many young and stupid things. We try to protect, you know, no you, doubt your children. I tried to protect my nieces and nephews from doing the same stupidity that I did. Mm -hmm. it never works. <laughs> so um, the other question I want to talk about, I'm going to pull this up on this. What are some of your favorite storylines? Tom, why don't you talk about some of your favorite storylines? I've got, uh, let's see here. There we go. I've got the covers up on the screen now. What What's something oh, that comes to mind that's your favorites? This is great. I, I, I have no idea what's, what's in any of those books. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well. I, I, I might just, be able to help. <laughs> I just saw what I actually remember. Okay, which one? Okay. Um, the, 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 I think it was the girl fight one. Was that? Oh, that, oh yeah. That's that actually, one. that's a really good Father's Day issue. Yeah, 51 yeah. or 81, yeah. There, there were a couple that, that, you know, that I remember with fondness. Um, that one, I remember a story with a, where it starts out, Spider Girl is tied to a chair, and mm -hmm. Normie has captured her. Spider I guess she's Girl Twenty Seven. Okay, okay, hold on, I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, but there you uh, go. There, okay. right there, she's tied to a chair. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, and she manages to uh, end the Goblin, you know, uh, Spider War uh, by talking him down. Yeah. Um, there, there was also another one where we dealt with, um, with, uh, uh, you know, uh, abuse. Um, uh, some girl, some girl's, uh, you know, boyfriend was beating her up. Kelly, what yes. issue? <laughs> um, it's the girl that fell from Earth. I cannot remember the issue okay. number, but it says that on there. But, okay. but some, some of those, you know. You're amazing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it does come back in amazing. Um, the character is in a few. It's an ongoing situation with her. 
Yeah. Yeah, Tom, what yeah. was that character's name? <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know why it's a game show. Eighty nine. There you go. Right there. You would think the Falco would be a great phone a friend if you were doing Spider Girl <laughs> trivia. He is not. <laughs> he is not a good trivia. Neither am I, unfortunately. Actually, um, <laughs> the girl who fell from Earth is a very important issue to me. Uh, for personal reasons, and I, I really like to this day, like as an adult, kind of tear up when I read it a lot. Me too. Because too. I identify with it. Um, so I thank you guys for writing that issue. Honestly, yeah, awesome. wow. that, I feel was like it's something, that was something that we built to for a while. We we had a lot of conversations uh, of how that dynamic between. It, it started out with the simple idea of the scene in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And what, what was that character's name, Cal? I, otherwise, I'm just going to sit here. I, I can't. Yeah, I can't think of it either. Sorry. Like, I'm, I, I do problem. have fangirl brain going on. Um, so <laughs> I'm not. Do you have any of your books handy? Alice? Um, what? Was it Allison? Oh, sorry. There's, there you go. Yes, there's Allison and Grace. Uh, I can. The, yeah, I don't. I don't have the books. I don't have the books here in the department. So anyway, one second. I mean, one second. In Which I'll keep talking. I'll find it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so eighty nine. We, we had talked about that that uh, that scene. It all grew out of that scene because Tom and Pat had done it several scenes where Mayday got bruised during the course of a fight, and MJ would help her with makeup and everything to cover bruises, and. Tom and I were talking about May Day and her dynamic or everyday existence in school. And one of us just thought, if somebody saw her doing that, the assumption would be that there was some kind of, a, of, of abuse going on because she wasn't on the basketball team anymore and all that kind of stuff. And we, so we came up with this one. It all grew out of this one scene where this uh, this other girl sees May Day reapplying her makeup, and says, "Your dad or your boyfriend?" And then immediately regrets that she opened the door for this conversation. And May Day realizes what this girl just said, and won't let it go. Yes. Uh, and it, it was a, a slow burn for in the background of several issues as May Day tried to get through that wall. And uh, I thought, you know, I mean, Tom is a structure writer and uh, he's very good at slow burn and letting something be a B or a C story before it comes into the main mm -hmm. story. Mm -hmm. And we finally, when we had a discussion about it's time to pull the trigger and bring this up to the mm -hmm. fore, it was something that we both took incredibly seriously. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we, we did a lot of research. Yeah. Because we didn't, didn't want to cheat. We didn't want to cheat. The moments where you know we could involve Spider Girl and all that, and it really wasn't a Spider Girl story. I don't think Mayday's in costume for any of it. Is she? Um, no, she does go like because um, in '89, it's right after um, one of the either last uh, last planet or last world standing. I'm not right. entirely sure, sure what um, which one it was, right. but af after it's right after that miniseries where she she has a broken arm. And in 89, she goes after, and it's Sandra. Benjamin Herman is correct in the comments. Uh, it's Sandra, her name is Sandra. And it yeah. basically May gets so mad after seeing Sandra in the hospital that she goes after the boyfriend. And that, that was one of my favorite scenes. Also show anger, yeah. but ultimately does not. It was, although, it was, it was one of my favorite scenes early on though, because Tom also dealt with the dynamic of Mayday making it worse and mm -hmm. escalating it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because at one point the boyfriend takes a poke at, at Mayday and she catches his hand and cracks it, yeah, and, and threatens him. And yeah. of course he runs to Sandra and tells his version of that. And it, you know, it, it was it was a wonderful back and forth as a as a B and a C story for for months before yeah. we got to uh, to it coming to a boil. And then when it finally did, it involved Courtney and uh, you know. Yeah. Which, uh, yeah. 
yeah, I mean, it was something I'm very proud to have been a part of. Because. Hey, Tom Fabrizio from Italy says happy birthday. Yeah, happy and birthday. We were, we were just, oh, it was yesterday, wasn't it? Tom yeah. Yeah. He's 35. He's 35. <laughs> <laughs> he said he met you at... Hit the big one. Hit the big one is what Tom <laughs> Uh, Fabrizio says he met you in Italy in Luca so many years ago. I remember him with a great beard and many books under his arm, is what he says. <laughs> um, at Luca, yes, <laughs> that's uh, that's one of one of the times when I did one of one of the things that proved that that I am the stupidest man in the world. <laughs> um, I've heard the, the term, uh, so I'm going to check that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I haven't heard from Sal. Sal, do you have a favorite storyline from Spider Girl that you remember? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. The, the phone nope. is uh, going haywire here. A, I think it's, it's close. I think it's probably close to a speaker. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, What's, actually, I've had it that way for quite some time. Then all of a sudden, I'm sorry, get a, that's sorry. Okay. What, what, uh, what was your um, what, Oh, just your favorite uh, Spider Girl stories that you worked on, Sal. What's your favorites? Oh my gosh, I don't even remember them. That's <laughs> <I'm, I'm> because <forgiven laughs> you never oh, read like that. Hey. <laughs> what the heck is that? <laughs> Come on. Ron, are you trying to scare us or what? Let me change the <laughs> name. Fantastic. The cap. Um, there you go. Hold on. I, I, there you I, go. I really enjoyed doing the Child Within. That was uh, Child Within. That was uh, very cool. I thought that was uh, some great writing and uh, penciling on the part of uh, Tom and Ron. And uh, actually, the what I started aching it was when the book really went through the roof. So, mm -hmm. uh, so you know, take that for whatever you think it's worth. Yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, guys. Don't I kid. <laughs> uh, and, and Adam says he's just here for Ron's cosplay, actually. <laughs> Jim Salakrop's in the house. I want to hear Tom's story about how he's the stupidest man in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to cut you off. There are oh way, too many, way too many examples, but... but um, the Luca Convention, uh, you know, obviously in, in Italy... Um, the convention um, was supposed to run, I think, three or four days. But the first day, uh, they kept delaying the opening of it. And there were people waiting outside for hours. Um, and I thought, you know, this, this is terrible that these people are waiting online for out, you know, hours. So um, we had a bunch of uh, Spider-Man posters and I got hold of Mark Bagley, who was also at the convention with me, and said, "Let's go out and give these, you know, you know, give people some posters." So we walked outside. They they opened the gates. They let us get out, um, and we had these armfuls of posters. And the next thing I knew, we were completely surrounded, <laughs> and I'm handing out posters like crazy. I lost Bagley. I don't know what happened to him. <laughs> I, you know, and I'm thinking I'm I'm going to get crushed here. <laughs> you know, <laughs> how stupid could I be walking into a crowd and hand out posters? <laughs> Finally, all the posters disappeared out of my arms, and then somebody shoved a marker in my hand because he wanted it to sign. Then naturally, everybody wanted all these things signed. Oh man! So I I'm, I just started signing posters like crazy, and, and at one point I bumped into somebody, and I realized it was Bagley. So we stood back to back signing posters. <laughs> we were out there for about three and a half hours. Uh, finally good. signed all the posters and that sort of stuff. And then they wouldn't let us back into the convention. <laughs> oh, man. Man. So we went out to lunch and uh, had a few drinks. And that's the end of the story as far as you're concerned. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Let me hear from Allison and Grace too. Allison, what's yeah. your favorite Spider Girl story uh, in the run? Oh man, um, I think one of my favorites is from um, uh, the Amazing Run, where uh, she uh, it was with Carnage, and uh, he had kidnapped 
her little brother. Mm -hmm. Benji, to, yeah. You know, With Benji. Had to save him and then ended up messing up his hearing and then just felt so guilty about it. And Yeah, that was good. They obviously ended up being okay, but I really liked that one because I have little, I have siblings too, so I kind of, that kind of resonated with me. I'm like, what would I do in that situation? How bad would I feel? But, would you have deafened your little um, brother? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was that a tough choice? Sisters, but... <laughs> that, was, that was my idea. Oh, you're, you're, you're evil, friend. Evil. So, oh. The idea of using Reverb's uh, sound device uh, from, from police lockup to, to defeat Carnage, mm -hmm. and you're always looking for you know some kind of secondary drama to have happen and everything, and uh, you know uh, I suggested that, and then when Tom saw the page where Benji's sitting there and he seems fine, but then you see the blood dripping out of his ear, oh, he called up and went, "You are a hater." I think I it's awesome that. that we have three Spider Girls in the room, and everyone wants to know about Friends's costumes. Yeah, <laughs> maybe Hulk out next. Nah, uh, I'm sorry. Is this Cap uh, Mol? How do you Molnir worthy? Can you hold the hammer? Mjolnir. Yes. There you go. By the way, you drew that back in yeah. Thor. What was it like to see that on the screen with Cap holding the hammer in the movie? Oh, by the time it, it was, because a lot of people emailed me and called me. I didn't see the movie for a while, and everybody yeah. was like, "Oh, you're gonna like this scene." Oh yeah. <laughs> And uh, I finally realized what they must be talking about just because of the way the characters were evolving in yeah. the movie. And I said, I mean, but is there a pile on? And then he does the thing and uh, all that. And they said, well, no. And I said, well, you know, he's actually lifted the hammer half a dozen times since we did the original. Yeah. So the, the scene in the movie was actually more similar to like one that Stuart Emerman did during some other link and all that kind of stuff it, it's just like with the first avengers movie when you see the uh helicarrier come up out of the water yeah mm -hmm. uh we did that first in a hercules miniseries that nobody read remember tom yeah. <laughs> uh, but then i found out that they also did it in uh ultimate avengers uh -huh. um, you know more recently to the film so i there's every reason to believe that joss whedon saw it there or came up with it himself, and not that he was one of the three people that read that Hercules miniseries. <laughs> Let's hear from Grace. <laughs> Grace, your favorite Spider Girl stories. What? What do you? What's your faves? Oh no! Well, it should I think be like, the rhythm. We're all running together, so I'm going to do a cop out and say the first time the black suit got. <laughs> oh, of course, the first time the black suit. <laughs> what I was going to say when yeah. she was with Black Tarantula. Exactly. <laughs> Even the new suit makes a whole new tone to the book too, which yeah. was interesting. Grace, hold up your web shooters I, when you held your hands up. Those look so cool. Oh, yeah. Very yeah. cool. Those are, uh, and contract <laughs> the yeah. spider yeah. is actually silver, too, correct? Yeah, it's silver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, nice. it's like a holographic silver. She sewed it. Here, I'll, I'll full screen. She her. came up to me. Are. You see? She, came, looks, looks she came up to me and with her full mask on and poked me on the back at Dragon Con, and I just turned around and instantly... And it was because she knew, since I was in Spider Girl, I would instantly know she was Spider Girl. And I had debuted my black suit the night before, and both of us bonded over the fact everyone keeps calling us Venom. Yep. <laughs> hey, we got and Anthony. I get mad, and even Brad, even Brad, I'm sorry, said that it was a symbiote. Yeah, I'm sorry. Multiple Brad. times, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm not going to take that from Captain America. <laughs> take it from Captain America. In fact, yeah. I would say at this moment, you are America's ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think it's a compliment. Maybe not. I don't know. Anyway, uh, let's see. What I'm going back to my notes, Kelly. Let's see. Uh, okay. Any changes? I mean, Changes? You want to talk about changes? Well, can I make one? Can I make one comment about, yes, uh, about Grace's uh, favorite storyline? Yeah. Do you remember we we got in? I don't remember who the editor was at the time. Was it the guy that I think it was the guy that didn't understand why the book was still being published? <laughs> <laughs> so we'll call him the editor who shall remain nameless. Before we were blessed with uh, Molly Laser and Nicole Wiley and and uh, and and some later editors, but. Remember, they 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 wanted the black costume, 
and they wanted they just wanted well just have uh black tarantula give it to him hmm. and 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 tom you anybody who's a fan of this character has to understand how much tom over the years has defended this character and and who she is and the choices she would make and all of this and sometimes you know the editors want something to happen you know we don't care how you do it just do it and tom will twist himself into a pretzel to give the editor what they want without compromising the characters in the story and that was one of those examples where tom was going i don't know what do you think of this what if she gets the costume but it's like a double blind where she's trying to make black tarantula think that he's influencing her but she's really not and not you know and i'm like tom whatever gets you through the night <laughs> you know, i'm sure whatever you're thinking is going to it's going to play you know it's it's going to play well and uh but that was one of those moments where you know editorial edict was handed down and their simple answer was too simple. It would it wouldn't have worked for May Day as the character that was established. So mm -hmm. uh, and it was Tom jumping through hoops to make it happen. But you know, we have to jump through these hoops because wh whichever character you're dealing with, you, you you have to treat that character as totally real. And 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 you know, you you have to you know embrace the integrity of the character. Because otherwise the stories are gonna they're gonna read like like stories or they're gonna read like video games. They're not gonna read like pieces of the character's life. And you want every comic book to be a you know. conversation. This is Joe Busema. I'm gonna hang up, but I wanted to say hi to Ron and Tom. Hi. <laughs> hi, Joe. Love you. Hey Joe. Joan, you always have our greatest sympathy. Hi. Okay. <laughs> hi, Joan. I guess Sal's done. Sal. It's been a pleasure. Oh, no, I thought you guys oh, no. were. Oh, Jones just leaving. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I give Joan credit. I, I give Joan credit for even being here to, to begin with. Oh, Joan, it's, thank you for putting up with Sal. How <laughs> long stay up past nine o'clock, Brad? Man, Cap, you're, you're sassy tonight. <laughs> um, Where were. We're, Real quick, before I go to the Kelly thing, we're going to show off a little bit of what Kelly did in May. Any changes oh. that you guys would do in the in in the book? Anything? Let's hear from Sal. We haven't heard from Sal. Any anything you would have changed differently? Nah, Probably the writer. Doing no. <laughs> Tom says he would have got a different writer. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's, there's that to consider, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, what would you? Anything you'd change? In, in the, um, I. It's it's easy to know. play Monday morning quarterback. I know, but well, I, you know, I, I, I can make a, a confession here, just to you know, we're, we're all friends here, so I'm going to make a confession. You're ready. To um, go. Whenever I'm I'm writing something, I I try to put my myself a hundred percent into it, and then once I turn it in, I try never to look at it again. Oh. Uh, I've 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 begged Ron over the years to never look at the published work because I've, I've told him all it can do is depress you. Because mm. um, anytime we look at our published work, we we see all these mistakes that we made, mm. and all these ways that we you know, really failed to, to, to get our message across. Um, so, you know, uh, the reason why I can't re remember a lot of the stuff is because once I wrote it, it, it it's gone. It's, it's out, out there. there. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, a I, downer, That's a real downer. <laughs> Ron, anything you do differently? Well, besides wear that Captain America mask, <laughs> yeah, I would have I would have maybe wearing a Captain America mask at all times. No, actually, yes, because I, I even though Tom has always told me never read the published books and uh, don't make yourself crazy, I tend to make myself crazy. So during Spider Verse, I was crazy a lot. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So when we did, uh, when we got to do that little backup with uh, May Day and, and the other Uncle Ben, yeah, you know, we kind of played devil's advocate and we played a little bit with, 
if we're talking about uh, multiple universes, if we're talking about, you know, uh, multiple realities, how do we know this is our May Day? Because, you know, uh, the writer of that uh, epic, uh, left <laughs> us, well, he left us several little holes Good. in the storytelling that gave, you know, he said, well, let's have some fun with that. Let's let's have some fun with the idea that, you know, we, we threw out the, the, the point there that she said, you know, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that there's a May Day out there that's waking up this morning and having wee cakes with her family and her little brother, and yep. I'll be fighting for her, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, and I enjoyed opening that possibility. Now, when we did Spider Island and we did the longer serial with Spider Girl in the back, we wanted to embrace what those other vicious, terrible, dark people had put the young girl through. Yeah. And we, we wanted to address it as we would address it if it were our character. So we didn't play those kind of games. And we just dealt with the emotional impact of, of what was going on with the character. So have I thought about you know what would happen if we got the call tomorrow? Yes, because we would have to get a new writer because Tom's forgotten how to write. I mean, <laughs> one of those things that he's admitted to me in private <laughs> and needs to be said. So, you know, after I talk to uh, Mark DeMattis and uh, get him on board and uh, get them <laughs> on our retirement, we should be fine. But anyway, <laughs> so yes, I've thought about things. But what's yeah. interesting is at the end of what was the last Spider Geddon or something like that? Yeah, yeah. 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 That, that goes into a question I had because that's all I got off Reddit. I asked yeah. people what was right. going on, and that's like literally 10 15 people all asked me to ask you guys what your thoughts were on spider geddon well i didn't read it and i don't i know tom didn't right tom sorry did yeah. not read it. i mean so i didn't read it i went online and i asked a couple of friends of mine yeah. private message so mm -hmm. where where were we left with the whole thing and i was able to go online and find the the one panel with the hand coming up yeah, and I'm like, okay. Um, so yeah. I mentioned that to DeFoco, and I okay. and, and Tom's reaction was, "Oh, great!" Because if we ever get called back on Spider Girl, now we don't have to mention it at all. <laughs> you know, we we can have I'm people, fine with that. We can have fine with that. in the kitchen, you know, talking about well, after what happened last year, let's not let's not talk about what happened last year. Yeah. Uh, what's yeah, up? Give, what's Dad, up give me a hand with these wheat cakes. There you go. That's how you yeah, started. Exactly. So you know, the, there are one or two things that I I yeah. to play through on, but we might, if ever given the opportunity, we may never have to actually deal with any of that. You know. I mean, there's still the extraneous uncle yeah. running around, you know, things like that. They, they, uh, no, I, I actually, um, the Uncle Ben died in Web Warriors. There you go. We're done. Don't have to deal yeah. with that. Yeah. Clean slate. So if, if anybody is watching this debacle right now, mm. let's do Spider Girl again. We oh, got yeah. we, we, <laughs> the deck's clear. Let's go for yeah. it. And, and, you know, I, I don't know if this is true, but uh, I, I hear as a writer, do you not leave the character in kind of the default mode for the next guy? I mean, Spider-Girl, as in that Spider-Geddon story, was not left in the default mode. Well, I think she was once the hand came up. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, that's true. That was their way of saying, see, but everything's back to normal. But killing off the dad, Peter Parker, just that was well, a gut punch for Spider-Girl fan. Yeah, and then, then they fixed it by the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there, there are guys who create and there are guys who don't. Um, and um, Oh, here we go. Never mind. I don't want to go in that, that direction. <laughs> I, was, I was afraid. I was afraid we were going to go somewhere darker as the room you were in there, Tommy. <laughs> darker than the room you were in. <laughs> yeah, listen. Let me let you say, in the old days, while we were on the block, yeah, there were several editors that wanted us to kill Pete and Mary Jane. Oh, oh they, it was ridiculous. How long? Every time the new editor came in, they said, "Hey, we've got a great idea for a story. You kill Peter and Mary Jane." Oh, yeah. And yeah. Say, okay. Yeah. Then what do you do the following month? In fact, that first that first annual that that you did with Pat with Sal Lang was you kind of you know going one of all American one of these uh, to the editors uh, because it had her it had them both dead on the cover. 
and it was you know the the debut of misery and everything um but yeah because they that was it was ridiculous i i can't tell you how many the new editoritis on spider girl was always the same yep. pattern it was a, either kill pete kill mary jane bring her to the 616 yeah you know it was all kind of the same the same type of things and uh uh, it, and until we got to like Nicole Wiley and Molly Laser, because they would quite often say, "We need a boost. Yeah. What have you got?" Mm -hmm. And they would ask us to. To I mean, the, the one time was uh, more obvious than others. It was we, we never intended to do the Hobgoblin in uh, in Spider Girl. We did the uh, the the Fifth Avenue Phantom episode, the the Phantom uh, fashion episode. And we used Daniel Kingsley because of his connection to the fashion industry. But and we did a little flashback shot of the Hobgoblin, and the drums started beating with the fans that oh, they're gonna do Hobgoblin. No, we weren't. But By then the our editor called and said, We need something to Jack Sales. That's uh, cool. Yeah. yeah, and we sat and talked about it, and and it, one of us said, I don't know, maybe we just need to pull the trigger on Hobgoblin. That could be fun. Yeah. So we pulled the trigger on Hopkins and we got some good stories out of it, I thought. You know. Yeah. Well, uh, Allison and Grace had some questions. Uh, who who would like to go first? Uh, yeah. Allison, you want to go? Guess. You just gave birth. I, you're, you're a hero in my book. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, actually, and it's not so much about the comic book, but I was wondering um, if if Mayday were to be part of the MCU universe and be in the movies, is there anybody that you guys would like to see play her? Any one of you three guys. <laughs> any one of you three. That's what Tom said. That's awesome. Yeah, any, anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we really wouldn't have to go too far with this screen right now to find somebody. <laughs> I, uh, you know, it, it, I my answers are always very different than what people expect, and I don't know the actress's name. Uh, did you ever see Last Man Standing, the Tim Allen, the last Tim Allen sitcom? Mm -hmm. The the yeah. actor who played the middle sister, not not the not the fashionista, the middle sister who ended up getting going into the military. Here, oh, I'll, yeah, I'll, go, the, um, I'll I'll Google it. Hold on. Oh my gosh, what's her name? Here, there's the last man stand. Is it yeah. this girl, it's Caitlin? Caitlin Deaver. Okay, let me pull her Steve. up. Okay. Because she oh. is. A young woman, you know. I mean, there, there's there, it, it. Mayday doesn't need to be ravishingly beautiful. She's not Mary Jane, and she's not Pete. She's, she's, you know, she's got an energy to her, but uh, she shouldn't be necessarily the most beautiful person in the hallway. I mean, that would that was Davida. You know, Davida was the one that got all the attention. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's so good. Uh, that that was I just like the way she played that character. She was just very straightforward as that character, and I, I would see that. Uh when we were actually back doing the book in the olden days, uh the young woman who played the voice of Kim Possible. I saw yeah. her I saw her on some TV movies oh, that yeah. been interesting as, as May Day. But I'm oh, yeah. out of as we speak. Uh, 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 Christy now. Carlson Romano. Yes. Yeah. Is her what's name. Her, what's her um, name? Gosh, when I was amazing. Christy Carlson Romano. Um, when I was trying to be a child actress and gave up because I was a child yeah. and decided I wanted to go see Lizzie McGuire with my friends, then go to an audition. Um <laughs> I was always I was always typecasted as Christy Carlson Christy, Romano. Christy Carlson Romano type, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. It was always that type because she was Ren from Even Stevens. That's oh. it, right. Oh. right. So. But, you know, so, I mean, it, it's it's one of those things. I, I With Peter Parker, it's always been unknowns or relative unknowns. And mm -hmm. I, I think that's always a smart way to do it mm -hmm. and uh, uh, because you want to see the character. I mean, the, the, going all the way back to when they cast Christopher Reeve as Superman. He's they, an unknown, they, yeah. They didn't want you to see Paul Newman in tights or, you know, uh, whatever. They wanted you to see Superman. They wanted you to see Clark Kent. Yeah. Well, that's always the way you have to go with those yeah. kind of things. Tom, who would you like? Do you know an actress that would be a good Spider-Girl? I I really haven't thought about it in, in years. Um, you know, 20 years ago, uh, Ron and I used to talk about, um, uh, was it Mandy Moore? 
Um, Mandy Moore? Yeah. 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 Uh, you I, used, I, Ron, you used was, a lot of her there you go. Uh, photos and reference work, didn't you? Yes. When she had her hair cut short? Yeah. I caught that as a kid and cut my hair like that at 13. So, oh, so like, that like that one right thanks. there? Thanks. The, uh, the, the outfit she's wearing when she first cut her hair and shows up at the door in the Mary Jane position, mm -hmm. that was uh, that outfit was even something yeah. I saw in Mandy Moore in a magazine. So Yeah. Uh, huh. Yeah, I, I, she was definitely an early inspiration. Mm -hmm. Sal, you got any famous celebrities that you play Mayday? Yeah, Marjorie Maine. Marjorie Maine. Marjorie. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> there, there you go. There's Mayday. She was old when she was twelve. Well, all, now all I've got is pictures of Maine. <laughs> and a dog. What's up with the dog? Oh, a puppy. There's a puppy. Oh. I don't know, Sal. That doesn't oh, look no. Like now we're. <laughs> oh, goodness. We, Brad, we need to get. We need to uh, take away your Google privileges oh, for know. a little bit. <laughs> was Marjorie Maine Ma Kettle? I just got a text that said Marjorie Maine was Ma Kettle. Sal, was Marjorie Maine Ma, Ma Kettle? Yes. Yes. There you go. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Ron, you're dating yourself. Don't forget to pay for dinner. <laughs> that wasn't me. That wasn't me. That was a that was a dear friend of mine. Old movie. So. Okay. Uh, Allison, I was born. I was born. There you go. Ago, so. Allison, you got some other questions for him. That was a good one. That got some good googling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, oh, look right behind you Ron is a. Black cat cameo. There's a black cat right over your shoulder. That's sprinkles. That's sprinkles. Sprinkles. <laughs> My kitty cat. Awesome. This is the best name for a cat. A, a little girl <laughs> named May. M A E. Named her Sprinkles. <laughs> um, and <laughs> well, Alex, you don't have any other. Grace, you got some that you'd like to ask the three? I got a question. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I don't know how much you guys read new Marvel stuff, but how do you think Mayday paved the way for some of the new young female superheroes like Squirrel Girl or Miss Marvel? Because it's only just now coming around where they're actually fleshed out young female superhero character comic books ever since Mayday, at least. I'd, I'd like to think we can take all the credit for anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's the answer, Tom. Come on. Well, I, no, no, I, I think that's a great answer, Ron. You know, uh, yeah. Well, if not, if not no, Ron, I, I don't want to have anything to do with that answer. When the time comes for incentive payments to be passed out for <laughs> any successful female character, like the <laughs> Spider Gwen, I hear so much about. Oh yeah. You know, I think some uh, some dues should be paid to. Uh, to old war horses like Tom and I for Spider. No doubt. No doubt. Well, um, anything else, Grace, you want to ask? That was the only question I have. Okay. <laughs> it's all well, good. Who, who, you know, I wanted to bring up too because it, it tied into Spider Girl in a weird way. Back in the day when uh, we were working on Spider Man back in the 80s before right. anybody except Tom on this screen um, was born um, when we were doing Spider Man. How old are you, Brad? 45. I was around. Okay. All right. Uh, Don't brag. Anyway. Uh, Sal has uh, socks on. People, the would ask, people would ask me. No oh, ties. Sorry, Sal. People would ask me who I thought should play Peter Parker. Okay. And back in the day, you used to get all kinds of weird answers. You used to get like Ray Liotta, you know, when yeah. young Ray Liotta, things like that. And I, there was this young actor on a show called Bosom Buddies. Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks, that I thought would have been a terrific Peter Parker because, you know, as it turned out, he was a terrific dramatic actor. He could play the comedy with Jameson. And I thought he looked like a, I mean, with a haircut, he looked like a Ditko Peter Parker. And he was always my first choice for that character at the time. And, and then years later, Tom and I are working on Spider Girl, and I see a picture of Tom Hanks and his wife, Rita Wilson, at, a, at some Hollywood event. And he had grown a beard for, I think, for um, 
Castaway. Right. And I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's me, Mary Jane. So it's awesome. Somebody lost a real opportunity <laughs> in hiring Tom Hanks back in the 80s. And well, then we could have had our Spider Girl movie. Ron, it just so happens the conversation is happening right now. He's talking to Tom Holland. <laughs> I saw that clip on Graham Norton. You can see oh, on Graham Norton. oh my God. Brad. <laughs> so I need to look for Tom Hanks Brad. with a beard. Hold on. Oh, Ellie, I'm man. going down the rabbit hole. Hold see, now, now we got Brad started on Google. Oh, boy. <laughs> Here we go. There you go, Ron. Is that what you're talking yeah. about? <laughs> Well, it's now it's all white. Oh, my God. Yeah, back there the you go. There's Peter Parker on the bottom yeah. left. <laughs> oh. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's cool. That's yeah, cool. I, it's you know, it was way before it was white when he was posing. Right. With Rita would be a terrific, uh, you know, older Mary Jane, too. I mean, it would, I mean she's an actress. And she's, right there. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I would agree. I would agree. It would, it would have been an interesting thing. I, I always felt, too, if the, uh, if the Raimi movies had gone another two films. Oh, no doubt. They probably would have had a kid, and uh, they could they could have chosen to name it May, or they could have gone a completely different direction. Who knows? You know. One thing I wanted to talk about with Kelly. Let me pull it up. Um, let me. The closet challenge. Yes, the month. <laughs> fantastic. Oh buddy. God. Go. <laughs> face to face, kind of, sorta. That was so much fun. It so really Kelly, was. talk a bit Thank about you. what you did during the month of May to celebrate Spider Girl. All right, so my internet's unstable, so if I sound weird, I apology, uh, apologies. But uh, basically, while under this quarantine and COVID, I have absolutely nothing, had nothing to look forward to, especially because uh, Heroes Con, where I was hoping to meet you guys, um, you know, didn't happen. So I had nothing to really plan for. So I just kind of went, <laughs> what if I just pulled... Um, stuff out of my closet i haven't really changed sizes since high school and oh, i have a lot of lot of clothes and i was like let me just see what i can pull and i managed to find i think ultimately what was it 36 outfits yeah allison you did great it was great. do you remember because yeah. i did more than i did way more than 31. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that. um look at that so i i just i did um are you seeing it? Uh, absolutely. I, I did a closet cosplay every day of May. Look at that one. Day. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> our so, uh, our you, resident you know, panelist, Adam Shingle, told me to wear that for tonight. And I was like, maybe not. <laughs> Sal so, so lost the screen. Right can't see us at the moment, but oh, there no. you go. I'm getting it back. Ah, here we go. Okay, Sal, look at look at this one. She she did the month of May dressed up as tried to cosplay as every as 30 different okay, outfits. That outfit, the older I get, the more cringy that outfit gets. And I enjoyed it and I needed to make that happen. So that was the one that I don't count for this. That was a bonus because I bought all of that off Amazon and super glued a Dalmatian costume onto a leather jacket. Oh, this just one? to make that happen. Oh, that's a Dalmatian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like the Dalmatian ears. I just totally nailed it. Oh, that's, that's you can't tell. It looks awesome. Let's see. Here we go. This is I like this one. That was a good one. That was my yeah. favorite. Yeah. Nice. Maybe that was everyone's favorite. <laughs> and of course, every single time, every single time I ever did those things, uh Here, anytime quick, I had what? like some kind of midriff showing, I would go and I would like grab a pizza or something and somebody be like man look at those abs and i'm like i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> kelly saw what, saw what were you saying i was just gonna tell kelly that i'm amazed at uh, your creativity i mean it's just that, that the way you uh, reproduced all these costumes is fantastic oh that's really thank cool. you i i i account it to hoarding clothes <laughs> and, the, and, and the quarantine right <laughs> yeah, in the quarantine. <laughs> Let me this is just so fantastic. Uh, let me. Oh, then you did makeup oh, to get God. the bruise. Yeah, the makeup. So many people were upset with this um, about the bruising, and I 
I kind of cringe that I still have it there, but I I wanted to try and otherwise this, it just didn't look right without it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. We're all, we're all, probably only halfway through the month. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot. We don't need to show all of it. It's oh. all on Instagram. <laughs> Sal needs to see it. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Sal needs a nap. What? I'm much older than you guys, so just. What else are you doing on a Saturday night, Sal? Come on. Um, I sit in my chair and vegetate. <laughs> <laughs> my wife, my wife is waiting for us to finish up. So we can both have uh, ice cream. It looks so good. Oh, ice cream sandwiches! Wow, that sounds good. Let's see. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. Put a dampener on the whole thing, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. I think we went through the whole month. Oh, yeah, we did. We went through the whole month. There you yep, go. We went through the whole month. <laughs> and the creator saw it, Kelly. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ron was. Um, I think Ron commented on most of them every I day. I thought it was terrific. <laughs> I mean, I, it was a little. You know, I, I have to admit, I my ego was a little involved in it. And, you know, it was nice to well, see. I mean, it was nice to see some pad outfits in there too. But <laughs> no, it, it, for me, it was it was a, another taste of when we had. Again, I'm, I'm going to bring it up again because I. I'm going to get accused of being a sexist, but when Molly Laser and Nicole Wiley were our editors, um, it was always a, a, a wonderful support for me because they would, I was buying magazines that a guy my age shouldn't be buying because we wanted to make sure that, that we weren't being completely ridiculous with the fashions and we didn't just want them to be jeans and t-shirts every issue, you know, that kind of thing. And so a compliment from one of the female editors was always, a, uh, you know, a boost that they would say, oh, I could certainly, I could see my younger sister wearing that, you know, she's in high school now and all this. And it felt good. You know, I mean, at one time I had her wearing Uggs and uh, Molly Laser called me up and went, I can't believe you ever wearing Uggs. That's terrific. You know, and, and everybody I knew, was, what's, what's an Ugg? You know, but, uh, what's an Ugg? so I was, I was trying to pay attention to this kind of thing. So it was neat to see in a young woman's closet that you, cause that was what was cool about the challenge. You weren't going out and buying this stuff. You weren't going to, uh, you know, the, the Salvation Army and, and building these costumes. You were going, through, it was the closet challenge. You were going through mm -hmm. what you already had in your closet and you were able yep. to reflect the outfits that closely. I got a big charge out of it. I was, I was laughing every morning when you would put the next one up and, and see what, to see what you had done. So cool. I really enjoyed it. So yeah, and and yes, it, part of it's because I need an ego stroke every once in a while. <laughs> but it, it, it worked. I, I thought it was a lot of fun, and I thank you for joining. Kelly, you had some I, questions. Thank for you us. guys, because I wouldn't have done it without Spider Girl. So, <laughs> so Kelly, you've got some questions too. You want to hit hit up? Yes. So I think technically I've asked two already. Yeah. So the only other one I haven't asked is if um. Basically, if Spider Girl the end was not actually the end, and y'all had still continued the series, what would the next storyline have been, and would April have been killed off? That that's a that's a hard one. Um, it's know, been forever. I I apologize. Yeah, I, I don't know if 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 April would have been killed off. Um, she was just such a strong character. Um, we, we we thought we had lost April a couple of times, but she just kept wanting to come back into the series. So we kind of, you know, it would, have, it would have been too much fun to explore that last moment when um, her future self downloaded into her brain. Yeah. You would have been a fundamentally different character. And I think she would have had a chance to redeem herself in ways that uh, would have been fun to, to see. So I can almost guarantee had the strip continued, we would have gotten back around to her at some point. Knowing Tom, it probably would have cooled off quite a bit and you know, uh, we would have given it some time and let it play out. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm fairly certain we would have gotten back around to April. She was too much fun. She was too much fun to, uh, as a foil for May Day. Yeah. yeah. 
yeah, a also lot of too, the oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was no, just no. gonna say, um, there's a Funko Pop. Mayhem is getting a Funko Pop at really? the end of the year. Really? Oh. Yeah. What not not that? Spider Girl still hasn't gotten one, but how does Mayhem Mayhem get one? will? Because Mayhem is <laughs> getting a Funko Pop. What? Well, because yeah. everybody's, everybody's into the symbiotes now. It's all about the symbiotes now. Everybody wants yeah. to talk about the symbiotes now. <laughs> mm. It, you know, I got one back off. Oh, he's out for cosplaying a change. He's going to be cosplaying again. With a lot of the characters, you, you know, we would do these stories where we thought we were saying goodbye to them. Yeah. And then, you know, <laughs> and then they would, you know, they would haunt us and, and have to come back. <laughs> uh, Tom, know, what about that fandom? It, it, uh, the fans brought help bring this book back several times. I mean, it almost unheard of, I think. Yeah. Um, it, you know, here's a sad reality of the direct market. Mm -hmm. the sales only go down. Yeah. Um, and that worked with every title except for spider girl. Um, oh spider God. girl. <laughs> thanks to our fans. Uh, <laughs> Ron you know, and we, Spider -Man. We were a very stable title, and and a lot of times we would bounce up, um, which used to drive the sales department crazy because they would, you know, they project, oh, you know, as of this number, you know, sales, sales will be down, so it's time to cancel the book. And they'd tell us this like six or eight months ahead of time. So we'd, we'd prepare for the end of the spider. <laughs> and then as we got there, yeah, um, they they, you know, uh, I can't tell you how many times we're writing what we think is the last issue, and we get a call saying, "Nope, nope, we need six more issues." Yeah, uh, it, it was a it, it was a, a heck of a roller coaster ride. Yeah, uh, but but to address the fan situation, uh, yeah, Brad, it was it, you're right. The fans were very active and very smart. We've been blessed hey. with. Sorry, guys, my internet is going crazy. Is everything all right in your neck of the woods, Kelly? <sighs> yeah, um, I think it's I we the long running um, thing of eight to T is terrible. <laughs> my my internet right at eight just started going insane. So it it sounds a lot better now though. So I think we're good. Rock, so rock, sorry, rock. guys. Rob says uh, Ron is the Diana Ross of comics. <laughs> I prefer I prefer share. But... <laughs> anyway, anyway, what I was doing is, is with the fans is that they were they were intelligent fans, very uh, passionate fans, and 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 but but they were also smart in that instead of writing to Marvel and complaining that they love the book and don't cancel the book and all this, they they took it upon themselves to to produce their own flyers. And to approach the retailers, and to help sell the book to retailers, and that was unheard of at the time. I mean, they were they were an amazing group of people that that really spent their own money. At one point, they wanted to start some kind of a Kickstarter or something. And what if we put together the money? Will Tom and Ron do the book? You know, and Tom was going on the Spider Girl message board and going. Please don't do that. <laughs> Please don't put us in the situation of having to say no to a situation like that. Uh, but that's how passionate they were about the book. And that, and that is more flattering than you can imagine. Tom and, yeah. Ron and, and Sal, too, you guys have been to conventions. You've seen Spider-Girl cosplayers. Do you have some stories that you can share of memories that you have of the cosplayers of Spider-Girl? Um. The cosplayers, the ones that dress up in, as Spider Girl, Sal. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Um, what do you got, Sal? Actually. <laughs> oh, this sounds good, Sal. I want to hear it. <laughs> I had to think about it. Because, okay. Uh, my memory is not what it used to be. So let me think about it, and the other guys okay. can answer okay. in the meantime. Danny Fingeroff says Ron has amazing fantasy 15 Spider Man eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's cross-eyed. He's cross-eyed. <laughs> what am I doing here? Come on, come on, Grace, Kelly. What am I doing? Who am I? Who am I cosplaying? Um, 
<laughs> I think Bruce is much more specific. You can't just say Spider Man. Um, are you a clone? No, no. I'm Miles Morales from the Spider Verse cartoon. Ah, okay, there you go. Okay. First costume he wore. Okay, okay, boy, tough room. <laughs> yeah, tough, tough crowd. I, Tom, do you have any memories of Spider Girl cosplayers at conventions? Um, not really. I, I or think. even the first one you saw. Hey, I just saw one. Oh, Sal's got one. Here we go. Yeah, very simple. Uh, we were um, in a costume judging uh, mode, uh, myself and a, a, a few other people. And these wonderful uh, costumes are coming along. This girl came along uh, dressed as Spider Girl, and uh, I smiled. And she stuck her tongue out at me. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, I have no idea why. <laughs> she did it through the mask or what? That's Maybe funny. Smile was lecherous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, Rob says, Diana Ross never heard crickets, Ron. Uh, <laughs> uh, that that we know of. That we know of. Ron, do you have any memories of a convention with a Spider Girl cosplayer coming up to you? Uh, it, it, there was the one suit that was available for a while uh, that was the fairly prevalent. Um, I think uh, uh, Kelly, I think you had an experience with it, but you had some sizes. Disguise, yeah, yeah, yeah. that it, it was uh, made by Disguise, and it was under the Women of Marvel's line. And you were, oh, yeah. I, I was seeing a lot, uh, and when that suit came out, whether they knew it was Spider Girl or not, or whether they just thought it was a female Spider Man, I saw a lot of uh, people online with, that had ordered that suit, and mm -hmm. saw one or two of them at conventions and everything, because it was at um, Baltimore. That I saw it for the first time and realized that the, it didn't have webbing on the back. Yeah, <laughs> it really bugged me. It didn't have webbing on the back, yeah, and then I could never get it to fit right. There you go, Grace. Yeah, a lot of young women have done a wonderful job with the suit over the years, and and there's that weird thing about is it red and black because the spider mm -hmm. joins right in with the with the, the pants. Um, or is it, or, or should the spider be dark blue and, and yeah. what, what level of gloss it is and everything. And, and I, there was a lot about that, that suit that was available that I thought worked, but then there was also a lot about it. If it turned around, there was a lot that didn't work either. So yeah. some of the best ones I've seen have been, you know, either homemade or doctored, which I know yours was, mm -hmm. uh, you actually uh, took a hand in and, and, and went in and, uh, you the paint on the webbing. Yeah. Well, also Spider Bite um, Designs, who designed this suit. Yeah, I'll um, there you she, go. And this is going to be insane because I'm just going to move my leg up to the screen. But Don't hurt most of the time, <laughs> it just has it like right here. Like this is where the red part of the webbing ends. I had to ask for an edit. And I, I had to work through language barriers to get this to move no upward no and then um then ex basically figure out how to take that suit pa digital suit pattern and put it on like basically make sure that it scaled exactly right and there was a lot of math involved and i'm bad at math <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. it sounds like it might have been easier just to go the way grace went and make it yourself Right? That's but, the reason why I picked the black suit, no webs. The other half. Oh, there you go. That's smart. So, Kel Kelly, you have some stories you talking about. There's one about a little girl that came up to you at a convention. Yeah. Talk about I love that story. Can you share that with these guys? Oh, yeah. So I was um, walking the parade um, I at Dragon Con. Uh, Dragon Con's huge southern, southeastern uh, convention. And we have a parade because it's through like an entire city block. And I call it Nerd de Gras because it's five days of just nerd insanity. And um, I was walking it as Spider Girl. And this little girl was just, you know, sitting in a chair right on the edge. And she's just screaming, Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Spider-Man. And I come over to her and, you know, I just say hi. And she looks up at me and she goes, oh, Spider-Man can be a girl too. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And like her face just lit up like the 4th of July. And That's just awesome. the fact that like 
you know, here because she wasn't looking at Spider Gwen's or, you know, other Spider Women. She saw the mask as Spider Man, and that's what she thought was so cool. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I've also. Story. Yeah. 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 I I mean I have um, also like I um, just before Dragon Con, um, I the what if 105 reprint had come out the dollar one i went through every comic book store here in atlanta and got as many copies as i could and all i did was i filled them up in my backpack um and whenever someone would come up to me especially little kids i would hand them what if so if i had it i just hand it to them and um there was a girl she was an adult uh, probably about my age she came up to me crying because she had never seen a spider girl before and it just awesome you know it made her day that there was somebody there and she had only ever had what if 105 didn't have the series but she basically she was like that issue inspired me to draw and i would sit there and i would copy the panels and until my my copy fell apart and so I opened up my backpack and I handed her the dollar issue and she started crying and then I started crying and, Aww. and I, that it to me made one of the reasons why I did this suit was for myself, but to see that kind of reaction out of people and see how, how much spider girl has touched so many really makes me happy because like when i read it i was by myself um i i know that there was the message boards online but i was too young for the message boards for most of that run <laughs> so mm -hmm. i didn't really get to participate and talk to people and connect to people yeah um so just the fact that like here's something that meant so much to me growing up can be used to connect to so many people um is ridiculous and wild and again Thank you guys for creating her and writing the series. Tom, otherwise, Ron, I wouldn't have it. <laughs> Sal, what, what is it like to see your characters come to life in, in the cosplay form? What is that like to see it? You, you're talking about the, uh, the films that have been made? No, when you go to conventions and you see people like Kelly and Grace oh, and Allison. What's it yeah, like when you yeah, see them? Uh, it, it never ceases to fascinate me. Uh, that people go through all of this trouble to make these costumes and they fit yeah. so beautifully most of the time anyway. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, it's really uh, an amazing experience. Yeah. Unfortunately, I haven't done conventions for quite some time now, but um, that, that really was an experience. I, I yeah. enjoyed it so much yeah. and it was so much fun. And except for the girl that sucked her tongue out at me. <laughs> Tom, what's it like for you to see that come to life? I, I'm just in awe. I, I, the, you know, the amount of work that you know you, you you young ladies put into your costumes, and you know, and and how you stay in character, just it just you know boggles the mind. I um. You know, Ron and I ha accept the fact that we're maniacs, and um, and and you know, twist ourselves into pretzels to try to produce the best stories we can we can produce. But to see uh, you know, uh, people like you putting the same effort <laughs> into your cosplay just you know, it just warms the heart. It just uh, it makes us feel that you know that that it was all worth it uh, and playing off it brad your very first question of the evening yeah was what about why is it that we're talking about spider girl in 2020 and right. what, what's her staying power it's not us it's kelly and it's grace and it's uh allison it's the people who are still cosplaying the character and still care about the character that's they're they're the only ones really putting her out in the public eye uh, rather than the Spider Gwens and the uh, Silks and all those characters. I mean, I know they're being cosplayed and cosplay very well too, mm -hmm. but it's wonderful that May Day is still kept in front of people, but it's it's by these, it's by people like this. It's not, 
I mean, we, we're very rarely getting the opportunity to, uh, to to put in our two cents on the character all, all that much anymore. So it's the, the fans are keeping the character alive, and that's incredibly gratifying. Yeah. And that, that leads into my last question before we open it up to everybody <laughs> with questions. Uh, by the way, uh, YouTube and Facebook, get ready for questions. We're going to open up the gates. I do- told a lot of people to come and ask their questions. Yeah. They no, wanted no, me to we're, ask. We're going to do it right before we're done. <laughs> So Tom and Ron and Sal, how do we get more Spider Girl books? What do we <laughs> to do? What? How do we bring her back? With you three behind the the wheel? Oh my God! Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. How do we get Bogey to make a sequel to the Maltese Falcon? <laughs> yeah, I um, I really can't see that ever happening. Um, see now I have faith that it will. Then it happens. <laughs> yeah, I, I keep thinking I've done my last comic book story. Um, and, I hope and, not. <laughs> well, every time he thinks he's out, they drag him back in. Yeah, I mean, it, it, she very well might be in the sequel of Into the Spider Verse. They kept making the the kid jokes uh, throughout the first one with Peter B. Parker. Right. Yeah, you could yeah. you could totally give her. Yeah. Yeah, anything is possible. Listen, I, I was I was stunned to see people talk with the Spider Verse. <laughs> yeah, yeah <same. laughs> um, But uh, you know, I I I can't see Marvel calling us back. Uh, they've called us back a couple of times for some small stories here and there. Um, uh, but you know, I you know, Sal, could you do a monthly book again? Sal, can you do a monthly book? Yeah, do Spider Girl again? No, no, just uh, inking. If if can you can you come oh, back and do Spider Girl? Oh no, let him pencil it. <laughs> what, what'd you say, Sal? I think I can handle one, maybe two a month. Sure. <laughs> I think Sal's up for it. Ron, you you, you know, lay your pencil down, Sal. <laughs> I'm on vacation. Yeah. <laughs> So listen, if, if they could get Sal and Ron back, then I'm then I'm back too. But awesome. but I, I really can't see Marvel. You know, I can't Tom, see Marvel wanting us back. The, Tom the, is the former editor in chief. Should we email? Should we handwrite to the Spider editors? Who should we write to make this happen? I, I you know I I think handwriting letters, yeah, um, works because they get so so few letters, actual letters in the okay. office one has such great significance to them and I, I just send them to cb oh okay the editor-in-chief yeah yeah send them to, to cb yeah whatever you want um and i think you know, the marvel will, will respond to that no doubt that, that's all right um, let's oh, oh but, go ahead Ron. Um, but, but the idea of going to the, <laughs> doing this <laughs> yeah you know this, this we may be, you know, at least one of us may be too old for this, you know, to to, to do a monthly book again. And I'm talking about Ron. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, Benjamin. We're going to open it up to questions. So start bringing those questions in on Facebook and YouTube. Benjamin says, Kelly, your story about Spider Girl fans was uh, is heartwarming. It really uh, is. Brad, can I can I address that for a second too? Yes, sir. Go ahead. I uh, at one point I had the privilege of uh, some private messaging back and forth with Kelly, and she had told the story that she told tonight on one of your other uh, live streams that uh, uh-huh. that I was that I was looking in on, and it it affected me. But I, you know, we we try to live these characters. We live with these characters a lot uh, as creators, and you know, with with a character like Eric Masterson or even Thor or Peter Parker, you know, Tom and I have our own experiences to draw from and our own uh, backgrounds to draw from. And, uh, and, and Spider-Girl has been a, a, a different, by, by definition, has been a different experience for us. Uh, Tom, as he said, uh, uh, you know, looks to his, uh, his niece and her dynamic with her father. I know Pat Olive would, would look at his, uh, his dynamic with his sister uh, and would bring that up occasionally. You know, he once pointed out that I was the only one that saw Mayday uh, as a, a romantic figure or even 
as a physical character because my only access to the character, was, I mean, I do have a young sister, but, but my access to the character was women I have known, uh, hmm. uh, whether romantically or otherwise. And I have a lot of female friends. And, and so it, it was from observation as much as anything. But that's one character that we can't walk a mile in her shoes, you know. Uh, I've been, when I, in my younger days, I had a Spider-Man costume and I got to play Spider-Man for some friends of, uh, you know, my, my friends and their kids. And I have pictures that I will uh, be buried with because at one point I could put on a Spider-Man costume and, and nobody, nobody laughed or had me arrested. <laughs> um, and so there, you know, I, I, had, I had a chance to be Spider-Man for people. And I've had a chance to be Batman for people. I bought the whole big rubber suit and everything a couple of times and, and did some uh, signings and autographs of Batman and stuff. And Adam West always said, the greatest privilege is to get to be the character for people yeah. and to have the kids react yeah. to you as the character, you know. Uh, and it is. It's wonderful. I, one time I, was, I, I wore my Spider-Man costume uh, to my nephew's grade school for their Halloween parade. And this little girl who was dressed as a uh, a ladybug. Mm. I mean, I was in full costume with the the full face mask and everything, but she knew Spider Man, and she she latched onto me literally. She came over and just held my hand Aww. and wanted to do the parade with me and everything. So I, I I got to lead the parade, and she was right there with me and was my sidekick. You know, Spider Man and Ladybug. Oh, um, that's cute. Aww. And it was it was amazing to me because she loved Spider Man and she wasn't afraid of the full face mask at all. And I know grown people who are unnerved by full face masks. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. Well, look at Florida. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, got I, I thank on. Kelly for the insight of you know somebody experiencing the character and and Grace and anybody who has able. And, and has had the you know the the experience that I'll never have of, of getting to channel Mayday day uh, and have those experiences I you know I'm jealous because uh, I love the character but that's one character I'm never going to get to be you know <laughs> that kind of thing. yeah so it, it's been fun to see to see it play out like I've been aware of other of other cosplayers doing May day and everything but uh, you know, hearing Kelly's personal connection to the character and everything, it's, it's, it's a very different thing and uh, it's very much appreciated. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's humbling to have the yeah. character grow beyond our contributions to it and become its, and become its own thing. So Sal, we got a question. Uh, is Sal do, still doing sketches? You can find them up on Cat Skills Comics. Also, uh, mm -hmm. Friends does sketches here too. Yes, yep. Sal yep. and I are, are both members of Cat Skill Comics. Mr. Scott Crest will take care of you. No doubt. You can go to CatSkillsComics.com. There's Sal's page, and Ron, yeah. your page is right here. Matt Olive is also a member of Cat Skill Comics. Yep. Yep. So there you go. You oh, hey, to look. Where is it? What? Yeah, that's pretty much all I'm doing Up now. There. <laughs> well, they've got, they still have these for sale. We still, we may still have some copies of uh, the Spider Girl 105 reprint. Yeah. Yeah, you got that, the dollar oh, count. Wow. Look no. at that. <laughs> so, I, I have it framed. <laughs> framed. Our friend George here, let me uh, oh. remove this. Hi, George. George says Sal is a workhorse. Yes, Sal is indeed a workhorse. <laughs> Uh, Rob says, never say never, gentlemen. <laughs> well, he might have something there, yeah. <laughs> so close says, Spider Girl was a book you wanted to buy. Uh, if you will it, it is no dream, says Adam. Uh, Adam, uh, the other Adam says, <laughs> Spider Verse 2, that would be good. Uh, George wants to know, what's the greatest lesson May ever learned from her father? That's a good one. Responsibility. There you go. Uh, Venkman wants to know Tom and Ron in your original amazing Spider-Man run from the eighties. If it hadn't ended prematurely, what would you have done if it had continued? A lot more stories. Yeah. And tell Spider-Man stories until I mean, that, I, I had friends of mine that said they're going to have to, you know, they're going to have to drag Ron friends off that book. 
Little did they know that's exactly what would happen. Uh, uh, we were we were blown off the book with uh, individual sticks of dynamite. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it would have gone on. I mean, for years. Had we, yeah. Yeah. we we had I, I had a notebook full of full of story ideas, and um, you know we would have just you know kept on trucking. Uh, that notebook eventually got thrown out. Um, that's sad. I would have loved to seen your you guys continue. I I, I just think that was so such a sad move that that happened. Uh, K go ahead. Oh, no, I just said it was unfortunate. I agree with you, Brad. Yeah, which, which in itself is news. I agree. I agree with Brad. <laughs> Kowa says I looked up the circulation. Spider Girl ninety seven was at seventeen thousand. Issue hundred was at twenty two. Demand the trades, right, Marvel? There are the trades. The, yep. ult the big ultimate editions volume three got delayed due to COVID, um, yeah. but it'll be out early 2021. Uh, I Matt say this like every issue I'm on or every episode I'm on, I keep reminding I people to go pre-order it. Matt wants to know <laughs> how the digest were selling at the end. They were selling great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately Scholastic got greedy and wanted to renegotiate the cut. And, uh, mm -hmm. They just decided. Marvel decided it was easier to just stop publishing. Uh, yeah, the to, the Dodgers were actually Marvel's best-selling trade trade paperbacks. They were selling like a hundred and twenty thousand copies an issue. Wow. Tevia, uh, no. Oh, sorry, Tom. Go ahead. Oh, they, they were doing great. Yeah. Tevia wants to know, uh, Tom and Ron, what you feel about Spider Girl, Mayday Parker meeting Anya Caranzo and that tie-in book for Spider Geddon. Mm -hmm. But I, she met she met Anya in Amazing Spider Girl. They switched bodies. Oh, sorry. I think you yeah. need. To, I think you need to explain that a little bit, Kelly. <laughs> I, mean, I should, but at the same time, I. I mean, that's if you well, felt my, confused. So did I when I first read that. Um, my, but, our relationship with uh, with with Anya with uh, Aranya was always complicated, wasn't it, Tom? Um, yeah, it, it was. You know because. Early on, our issue 75 was meant to be the issue where we were told that uh, Aranya was going to take the Spider-Girl title and that we were going to become Spider-Woman, which is a phrase I never thought I'd say, Tom. We were going to become Spider-Woman. <laughs> we were just going to put in a suit and we were both going to... Never mind. Anyway, um, so issue 75 was going to be the turning point. That was going to be... Uh, there was a. It was going to be a big scene at the end where she's fighting uh, Kodiak, and she, you know, declares that she's no longer Spider Girl; she's Spider Woman. And uh, and it was not until the eleventh hour, literally, we were working on the book uh, that we were contacted, and, and there was enough pushback from our fans that said we're not going to do it. They decided they weren't going to do it. They were going to call Aranya Aranya. And we were being going to be left alone. And I said, well, that's nice, except what does she say at the end now? <laughs> it, was, yeah. it was basically something like, I'm tired, I'm going home. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so the big declarative panel was not, there was nothing to declare, thankfully. Yeah. And we went on from 75. And, and Aranya as a character, I, I didn't have a problem with Aranya as it was. I mean, uh, you know, the streetwise Latina and all this kind of stuff. I I was disappointed when they finally did steal our name yeah. after we were after we had been canceled and they finally did take the name Spider Girl and they took a lot of the streetwise Latina out. You know, I mean it was they, they kind of uh mm -hmm. white the character a bit. And so in Amazing, you know, yeah. I, I enjoyed handling the character as an adult in Amazing. I, I enjoyed the dynamic between the two characters. Uh, to, the, the bit that Tom and I came up with where she kept referring to her as little sister mm. in Spanish and, uh, and May knew what it was May mm -hmm. understood what she was saying and you know makes the point at the end of the story that you know one thing I'm not is your little sister um, uh, Kenneth has I think this one's aimed at Tom yeah. not Ron what's the hardest part of writing Spider Girl and Spider Man Tom well that's right Ken I wrote all the Tom <laughs> You know, found the you wrote in the credits. <laughs> all the good ideas came from Ron. I came up with all the stuff he didn't like. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't know if there was a hard part. Um, you know, once 
once Ron and I understood the characters, um, the stories kind of wrote themselves. Um, Ron and I used to spend hours on the phone just discussing what was going on in Mayday's life or what was going on in Peter's life. Um, and then every once in a while we'd say, okay, yeah, I guess we got to come up with a story. We start throwing out ideas and, you know, in the end of the conversation, we had a story. I, the stories were, were, were easy. I, you know, I think yeah. the hardest part was spending two or three hours on the phone all the time. <laughs> Matt wants to know why you called McFarland's <laughs> webbing spaghetti. <laughs> Tom. I never did that. <laughs> what? You know, the, the, the Spider-Man's webbing, spaghetti webbing. Yeah. That was someone else who did it. Um, uh, but it, it's somebody that everybody has a, a great respect for. And, uh, you know, Todd uh, heard about it, but he needed, he, he needed to have a bigger villain. Um, so, so he chose me as the guy who, you know, called the it. The Italian. Italian. He chose the Italian. <laughs> yeah. The other guy who did it was also Italian. But, oh, was but he? he? Yeah, you know who he was. No, why, why aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Anime Hunter wants to know, were you ever attempted to tackle Amazing Spider-Man 418 where Spider-Man and Peter Mar Mary Jane's baby was still <laughs> rolling to find Norman Osborn and paid someone to get her forum or is my memory fuzzy and you already did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was the whole spider girl series. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the premise of the entire spider. Yeah. 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 Uh, K O W A. Everything you guys touched was golden and your earnest and heart was shown on the page. There you go. That's nice. That's very nice to say. Cause the, the, we, yeah, we're, we try to leave it all on the, uh, on the page if we can. Yeah. We have Mark Ditko, who is Steve Ditko's nephew, I think. Uh, props to Steve or, Ditko and Stan. Is he? Oh, or, I mean, he, he is. I I've, I've talked okay. to him before. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, they did it all. They yeah. are they are the root of the entire tree. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Sal, this one's for you from Rob. He wants to know, can you share a memory about Joe Sennett? Oh. I always loved your work with him. Same for Ron and Tom. Thanks. Uh, well, uh, my only regret is that I didn't know Joe better than I did. We didn't have that much communication between them. But you know what? What was so impressive about Joe is that he was not only a very gifted guy; he was probably one of the nicest people in the industry. Absolutely, just uh, first, first class, just first class, and. Uh, the, the few conversations that we did have, I enjoyed very much. Awesome. Joe was a very sweet guy. Yeah. Just he really very was. Sweet. He really was. Yeah. And he will be terribly missed. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, one of the things I, I pointed out on Facebook is that those of us who were fortunate enough to know him, we were always talking about the man first and the work second. Mm -hmm. uh, the fans got to enjoy the work. We were doubly blessed because knowing Joe was uh, a, a very wonderful pleasure. Um, I mean, on, on the, the subject of Joe Sinnott being Joe Sinnott, uh, on the occasion of his 80th birthday, Tom and I collaborated on, I, I did a piece of uh, The Thing in a, a Yankees outfit because Joe was a big baseball fan. Uh, and the, the, the point on the signature was, Back in the day, you weren't a Marvel guy until you got to work with Joe Sinnott. <laughs> um, and I was blessed very early on in a What If story to be inked by Joe for the first time. And you don't feel like you're a Marvel guy until you get inked by Joe Sinnott. And I was lucky <laughs> enough to do that. When he came on board for issue 400 of Thor, it was like the skies opened up and the angels sang. And <laughs> we, we were, you know, we we were legitimate at that point, you know. Tom and I are just two little knuckleheads who are throwing <laughs> throwing our ideas against the wall. But when you, when you get paired with uh, with a Joe Sennett or you know a Tom Palmer or a Sal Buscema, uh, you feel legitimate. You feel like, oh, now we're doing Marvel comics. Let's uh, <laughs> go, let's go. 
Hey, uh, Sal, Jeff has a question. What was it like to work with Steve Gerber on the Defenders? Those books were my all-time favorite comics. He's talking about uh, well, it's Captain America, right? No, the Steve Gerber uh, Defenders. Steve Gerber on the Defenders. Defenders. With the bozos. Out of the loop I am. I can't even remember what the heck I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, the Defenders was uh, was a great series, and uh, I enjoyed it so much. The only problem with it is that it's doing the group books is very very difficult. Yeah. And uh, I, I I really believe me when I finished the story, I was exhausted. Uh, simply for that reason, but the the whole experience first rate, and yeah. working with Steve was uh, terrific. Yeah. Um. Wh where did the question go that I had? Okay. Uh. George says, Ron, I had that '80s poster with Spider-Man and Green Goblin, Hobgoblin split down the middle with the classic villains on one side, and the new '80s villains on the other side of my door for years, even in college. And you did a new commission on that right there. So I love that new commission. That looks so good. Actually, there was a, a commissioner who we did a series of for him where he did different characters as old and new. And uh, it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, we haven't done one in a while. I mean, we may be done, but uh, I did an Iron Man and a Thor and a oh yeah, they're, you, Hulk, they're over yeah. here. I can pull mm -hmm. them up. So it was fun to revisit them, but uh, you know, I mean, it, it was you know, this Fantastic Four. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. The commissioner himself actually did a layout to suggest how to split the Fantastic Four, and I used it because uh, Ron DeFalco once told me if somebody offers you an idea, take it. <laughs> Man, uh, they were all they were all linked by Mr. Brett Breeding as well. So, how yeah. long would how long did something like that take to do? I can't imagine. Oh, Ten or fifteen minutes, Brad. Come on, okay. <laughs> trained professionals. Look at the Iron Man one. That one looks so cool too. Very nice, very nice. Okay, let me get back to the questions. Uh, to Tom and Ron, can you talk a bit about your untold tales story from ASM annual 1996, where you worked with Ramita senior. That's one of my favorite comics. I'm waiting for Tom to remember which one he's talking about. <laughs> I think it's Spider-Man annual 96. Spider-Man 96. It was called. Yeah. That, that's the one with the uh, Craven, right? Yeah. Yes. Tom. Oh my God. Look at that. <laughs> I am impressed as heck. That is crazy. There you go. Is it this one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there you go. That one. All right. I, the, the only reason I, I remember that is because I've got a, a piece of the original artwork hanging hanging on my wall. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Who gave you and that? I, you know? <laughs> Who gave you I, that? <laughs> I always walk past it and, you know... Ron, you look pretty good with Ramita over you. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> what a weird way to say that. You're senile. Uh, no, um, it, was, it was an incredible pleasure anytime I got to work with Mr. Ramita. Yeah. Yeah. Sal, Rob wants to know was there one book you wanted to work on, but you never did? Good grief. <laughs> Uh, honestly, I can't think of a book that I didn't work on. <laughs> it's just it's true. A, <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. I, I, I think I did pretty much every one of the major Marvel characters at one time or another. They may have been just maybe just one or two shots, but I think I, I did pretty much all of them. I don't know. Did Tom, Ron, do you remember? Can you help me out? Yeah, I remember if there's any books you didn't do. No, I don't think there are any books you didn't do. I mean, if you ask Tom and I that question, I would say, say Captain America, but you did Captain America. My hand got very tired. <laughs> you, never, you never did a, a substantial run on the Fantastic Four. You did a lot of fill-ins, and you did a, a yeah. brief period of Fantastic Four stories. But you were never really, you never did a long run <laughs> Oh no no! Hi, you're, yeah, you're right. Thank, thank you. Hi. Tom, is that your bride? <laughs> that that is my lovely bride. Hi there. Hi, Mrs. Hi. DeFalco. Hey, how are you, dear? Sounds <laughs> good. Hey, Sal. How are you? <laughs> uh, 
man as hot as a beautiful lady like you. What do you think this guy? I just don't understand. <laughs> I understand. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I love you, baby. Here, here's a question for Mrs. DeFalco. Do you like the beard or no beard? No beard. No beard. <laughs> Clean shaven, huh? Boy, you're... <laughs> oh, friends is giving a thumbs down. Friends likes the beard. <laughs> Mrs. DeFalco has to live with the man, Ron. I mean... <laughs> hey, I was here first. You were here first. <laughs> Ron is the other woman. <laughs> oh, Ron is the other woman. Oh, man. You're the other woman. <laughs> first. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> Hey, Rob you, wants to know, you, how's it well, like breathing in that mask, Ron? <laughs> what? Is, how is it breathing? It's fine. Wear a mask. Yeah. Wear a mask. There you go. It doesn't have the plastic in it like mine. Oh, no, it does not have a shell. No. no Kelly, can you show them the, uh, you, you did something special with your eyes on the uh, mask there. You made them look exactly like what. what I did, actually. Yeah, let me, let me full screen. Um, so. They were designed um, originally by me, but I did not get to complete them. Um, a friend of mine did that. But I I did everything I could to make sure that they looked exactly like uh, from what if 105. Yep. So they got little points at the top. Yeah. Yes. Actually, she I has the cat eye. Yeah, I think the points came later. I think I think it was I think it was Pat that added the points, Kelly. I'm not sure. I, I think so. Hers are bigger than what you wound up doing for Amazing, but well, there were there were periods in Amazing where I lost the points, and then I brought it yeah. back because yeah. I think the um, eyes look more narrow. I thought it would make her look more mature if I made the eyes uh, more narrow and cat like. Uh, yeah. But that uh, um, nobody seemed to like that. Yeah. Well, because yeah. I went by this particularly from the splash page and. It, does that have, does that have the little white? Yes. Version? No kidding. Okay. Yes. Genius. I um, am. A <laughs> you are. <laughs> but yeah, no. Um, if 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 Brad wants to Google Foo. Oh, okay. Appropriately, because uh, okay. unfortunately, my ring light makes that really blurry. But it does have it does have the points. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. If you look up the this little. Plot this page from What If 105. Okay. I'm pretty sure if you just type in Spider Girl, it'll pop up at some point. Although um, a lot of a lot of newer cosplayers are cosplaying uh, Mayday, but only because they think she's going to be in Spider Verse. But it it's it's been so they might pop up first now. But it's been fun because at least it gives them some a way into the comics and to learn. Hopefully, yeah. yeah. So hopefully, <laughs> but yeah. you know, I used to take great pleasure whenever anybody else would draw a Spider Girl that they weren't recognizing that her eyes were had that slight difference from uh, from Peter's. So we we used to take great uh, private glee when people would draw her wrong, you know. That, <laughs> but uh, so that, it's really interesting that you you captured that and uh, and realized it. Still looking, it, Kelly. It, just didn't much feel, it didn't feel right. Um, a lot of people like to use, especially on the face shells for Spider Girl, they like to use yeah. the ultimate Spider Man ultimate eye, and because it it has that it has a point, and it's close, but it just wasn't close enough for me. Uh, and you know, y'all say that y'all are y'all are uh, crazy with the stories, but like I I am crazy yeah. on. Here's the point. Yeah, uh, got it. So. Um, I'm I'm super crazy on details, and for me, because of how much made it meant to me, like I literally I've been cosplaying since I was 18, wow. and it took me basically to a whole 10 years before I this I felt I could uh, do made a some kind of justice, and honestly, it wasn't until I put the suit on and was out on the floor that I felt that. Cause I, to me, she's like way up top and then I'm just myself. So, yeah. you know, it, it's. <laughs> I'm going to have to uh, leave uh, soon because. No, no doubt. My yes. No doubt. Even, even, Rob is, even Rob is saying that you need to let Sal go have his ice cream sandwich. Yeah. So. <laughs> you already had it. <laughs> 
um, real, I need an hour some sleep. Oh, no I doubt. How about, how about we go around for final thoughts? Sal, any final thoughts about this show, Spider-Girl in general? Anything you'd like to say, Sal? Well, just generally, this has been a blast. I, I, uh, I always enjoy working with my partners in crime, Ron and Tom, and uh, they will be my partners in crime forever for, for however long I'm going to be around. <laughs> and uh, it was really a nice experience. It was nice talking to uh, Kelly and Grace and uh, all the other fans that called in. Uh, it's always a blast when that happens, and I enjoy it so much. It's so gratifying, and I still can't believe that all of this has happened. It's uh, it's amazing. Right. It's your part in the fun. <laughs> well, you're the best, Sal. I got nothing but respect for you. You're, you're awesome. Uh, you're very kind, Brett. Thank you so much. <laughs> Tom, final thoughts. What do you want to say? Well, I, you know, I, I just want to thank everybody. I, I you know, Kelly, Grace, and, and all the fans. Um, it, you know, guys, Sal, and you know, Ron and I, we, you know, we do most of our work in in isolation. Um, you know, we're, we're locked up in a room by ourselves for you know eight to ten hours a day. Um, you know, trying to breathe life into these characters, and um. It's to find out that the world really meant something to to you people. It is just so gratifying. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I am so thrilled when I when I meet fans and go to con you know go to the occasional conventions. Um, I I just want to. Just Tom, Tom's internet is you know, about, really. Uh, oh, there he goes. There's. There go. Well, Tom, thank you so much for all the the reading over the years. I've been reading you since the '80s. It's been a pleasure. Uh, let's see, Grace. Final thoughts. What would you like to say to everybody? <laughs> I want to thank you guys so much for making essentially the gateway drug into comics for me. It's the first book I ever read. Ron didn't even know me, but he signed a book for me and left it in a comic book store for me. Oh, hold on, hold, hold that up, hold that up, Grace. Let me see it. You just heard a girl picking up back issues at a no local shop, so he left it for me. <laughs> Look at that, Ron. Did, did I? Did, were you there when I remarked it, or was it already in the box? No, way? it was already there. You just, <laughs> yeah. I never got to meet you in person. Sorry. Well, you just oh. did. <laughs> yeah. So, Kelly, final thoughts. What? What do you? What? Go. <laughs> <laughs> I. I mean, I. Thank you guys for coming on. I definitely would not uh, want to have technical difficulties uh, with anyone else. So I oh, yeah. graciously appreciate that. And just thank you guys so much for writing a character that means so much to me. Um, it's really like as it's weird to say that a you know a fictional character saved my life, but like these stories and these comics, have gotten me, I mean, got me through adolescence and all the horrible teenage-ness. Um, but also there have been times in, in my twenties where I've been in a dark place and just being able to have it like on my phone or being able to go pull, pull it off my shelf and have that moment of comfort with that character means a lot. And it wouldn't have happened without you guys creating creating her and writing the stories as long as you did. So thank you. Awesome. Seriously. Um, you are, you're welcome. <laughs> thank you. So I've never said this, Ron, can you take the mask off for your <laughs> final thought <laughs> so we can see your face? Yeah. Uh, Allison is also, I think back if we want to bring oh, her back oh, on. She had to feed back. her baby. Let me get her a, a final thought before we go to Ron. Allison, you had to feed the baby. Uh, just want to say thank you for letting me join you guys. It was great getting to hear your stories and ask you questions. And um, oh, we never showed so off Allison's art. Girl. Oh, we did. Uh, I think okay. Kelly summed it up pretty well, honestly. Um, but yeah, I wanted to show uh, Allison's art real quick. Let me uh, <laughs> paste it up. I had some tabs open, Allison. Let me see. Because she she is honestly, I think my favorite. Spider Girl fan artist. 
Okay, so let me add that to stream. There is, let me see if there's art. You did one of Kelly as Spider Girl. Yeah, you yes. might have to scroll for a little bit. Oh okay. yeah. Well, oh, I was there, just gonna go up and Kelly. go to the there's go to the one where Kelly. she did the wonderful comic about uh, Spider Man Turn Off the Dark. Oh, is oh, it up it here? Recent. In this yeah. one? Yeah. No, no, no. Go down. Oh. Uh, okay. Hold on. Oh, God. No. Brad. Brad. Go down. <laughs> right there. Oh. There it is. Side nine. What did I just watch? <laughs> and there was a spider girl mermaid that you drew. Let me oh, well, that's way back. No, yeah. there's Kelly. Uh, You're getting there. Yeah. Oh, there she there is. There she is. Yep, one of the mermaid prompts. Her, her mayday area. Over here was a mermaid. Yep. There's always somebody getting off the bus down the block, Sal. <laughs> Ready to knock you off your perch. I tell you. All <laughs> right. So yeah. I'm giving the final thoughts to the tech wizard, Ron Friends. <laughs> no tech problems at all tonight. <laughs> yeah, no. I did, not. I did not because I started at like four o'clock this afternoon to make sure that I had everything I needed. <laughs> To join this party, but uh, you know, I just care more than a lot of other people. Yeah, it's, my curse. it's my curse. It's it's always been a, a point of irritation between Tom and I that I care so well, much you, more. You have a lot more free time than the rest of us. <laughs> hey, I'm still working in comics, you bum. Oh, hey, yeah, bum. we need to be able. Oh. We need to give. Uh, Ron and Sal, a chance to plug Sit Comics and yeah, sit comics. tell us what's going up. Yeah. Oh, Blue yeah. Baron, uh, and uh, we're doing the, uh, the the Justice League, the Avengers of the Sit Comics universe, the Heroes Union. And uh, Sal's working on pages now. I'm working on pages now. It'll be a new uh, debut coming Here, uh, next year. There you go. Right there. Sit Comics. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's TV You Read. It's a, it was a wonderful line of books coming. Uh, DeFalco is actually going to be doing some writing for us in the future, and Roger Stern is, uh, is working oh, with wow. the Heroes Union. Uh, Todd DeZago from Spider-Man has done some work uh, on, on uh, one of the solo characters, Startup. So uh, it's uh, if you enjoy the Marvel comics of the 70s and 80s, you will love what uh, Darren yeah. Henry is doing with Sid Comics. So thank you, Kelly, for no, no doubt. the opportunity. I appreciate that. Yep. Tom, is there anything else coming out that you want to plug? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> not really. Okay. <laughs> He's, have a steak for He's having a steak. Okay. <laughs> <That's what's Hey>. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> so, Ron, final thoughts. You get to close the whole show up. What's your final thoughts on all these cosplayers, all the love of Spider Girl? Uh, it's, it's it's an incredibly humbling thing. I, you know, Tom, we he, he's right. We talk on the phone and have conversations that no grown men should have and we get paid for it and uh, we do uh, invest a ridiculous amount of ourselves in the work um, and it, it's nothing but flattering and humbling and, uh, and and it fills our hearts when when people react to the work as positively as as, as uh, you you do and that you're out there representing the character so well uh, we couldn't ask for better representatives uh, to the next generation of fans, uh, to the present generation of fans, than than you as ambassadors of the character. And so we thank you for keeping the character alive. Uh, you're doing a much better job of it, and you're doing it much more actively than than Tom and Sal and I have an opportunity to do right now. So thank you for that. <laughs> uh, and Brad, you you annoyed the crap out of me, and I did. I did what Sal was talking to me in one ear. What'd you say, Rocky? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. What'd you say? I think Rocky I said, was talking I to me said, again. I, you've always annoyed the crap out of me, and and you continue to do so, and I and I appreciate it. It's okay. I, there's an ongoing gag on this show about how if there's a question, I should email Tom DeFalco at three in the morning, which I've done I, before. Where? Why? <laughs> Why did you do that? So I, I'm not going to see it till 10 o'clock the next morning anyway. <laughs> what are so, you talking about? I get up every day by the crack of noon. 
there you go. All right, gentlemen and ladies, it's been a pleasure. We've had a lot of viewers on this yes. podcast, so it's been. How many great. viewers did you have, Brad? Was it better than a normal? Uh, uh, I won't know until I hit end, but we've oh, okay. never gone under fifty at any point on, nice. on this whole broadcast. Oh, good. So that's, that's crazy. That's a, that's a lot. And these well, these and comments were coming in fast and heavy. So well, and while I'm thanking the ladies for cosplaying and everything, Brad, thank yeah. you for the uh, the Spider-Man crawl space. I mean, oh. it's, it's got to be one of the one of the longest lasting uh, Spider-Man websites. Yeah, we started in 1998. 1998 yeah. is when we started. Yeah. So, yeah. That's for computers, isn't it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I actually started it on dial-up. Yeah. Uh, you had so, it on Dream Cities, didn't you? Time. Just talking about the latest issue of Spider-Man. No know? doubt. That, that 1998. No, I, I, we, you guys make it, you keep it fun. I mean, sometimes the books and sometimes the politics and sometimes the, the, the office dynamics and the creative dynamics <laughs> seem to lead all the fun out of it. And so we rely on the fans to keep it fun. So yeah. it's websites like like the Crawl Space that do that, that keep the, the, the reason why people enjoy Spider-Man. You guys keep that reason in the forefront. You keep it awesome. fun. And uh, I can't thank you enough for that. All right. Well, I'll, I'll I'll take the first compliment of the night from friends. That's awesome. So thank you. <laughs> oh, used to it. Used to it. All you right. Can All right. For you. Uh, we, gotta you, we gotta get you an ascot or a. Or a would you call me? No. <laughs> <laughs> At some at some point, we need to get him an actual kingpin costume. Yeah, the, the, the cravat and the, or the whatever and the pin. And the, yeah, and I've shared this story with Kelly. I was at the Chicago Comic Con one time, and I got on an elevator, and a guy was dressed in something. I don't remember what he was. He looked at me. He goes, "That's a great kingpin." I'm like, "I'm not cosplaying, sir." <laughs> 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 See, my, my story is a little different. I get on elevators at conventions and people go, what the hell are you supposed to be? <laughs> and it hurts. It just hurts. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, I'm going to hit end. And thanks. Uh, thanks.